of the Agriculture and Food Authority Act 2013 to exempt cashew nuts, macadamia nuts, and bixa from the ban on export of raw produce. Uh, just to remind you that this is a bill by the Honorable Senator James Murango, and uh, this uh, bill further indicates uh, that it aims at enabling farmers add value to byproducts such as macadamia kernels, uh, which are currently being disposed of. Also, the amendment will stop smuggling of macadamia nuts to neighboring countries, which has been denying Kenyan or rather Kenya foreign exchange earnings. This is a bill that will this afternoon be considered at its second reading stage by the Honorable Senators as they resume from the a short recess in the last two weeks. The maternal, newborn, and child health bill, a bill originating from the Senate also by the Honorable Senator Beatrice Ogola, a bill that is also at its second reading stage, is part of uh, the business that the members will be considering uh, this afternoon. Just a look at what this bill entails is that uh, it proposes a legal framework that can facilitate and enhance uh, the delivery of quality maternal, newborn, and child health services, provide a platform for raising the profile and agenda for maternal, newborn, and child health services, provide a framework for formal engagement, cooperation, and promotion of coordinated approach to service delivery of maternal, newborn, and child health services in the country, also provide a platform of engagement between the national and county governments and to enhance accountability and sound funding strategy for maternal newborn and child health services. But as you can see, that is the mess ahead of the Speaker of the Senate, Honorable Amazon Jeffa Kingi, who is in the chambers to preside over this afternoon sitting. Allow me to hand you over for this live broadcast. Good afternoon. Natuombe. Ewe mwenyezi mungu, tokusihi ututazame kwa naema nyingi. Na baraka sisi wa tumeshu wako ambao umeridhika kutuita kwa nyadhifa za ungozi katika jamhuri hii yetu. Tokuomba utuajalie, tuyatende na kufikia mambo yote yatakao fikisho mbele yetu kwa njia ya haki na uaminifu. Hili kustawisha amani, ufanisi na heri ya inchi hii yetu na wale ambao haja zao umezikabithi mikono ni mwetu. Amen. Clark, do you have quorum? Can you proceed to call the first order, please? Order number one, administration of oath. Order number two, communication from the chair. Honorable Senators, I take this opportunity to welcome Honorable Senators back from the recess. 
which coincided with, with the observance of the Easter holiday for the Christians and Ramadan for the Muslim faith. I hope you had a time to meet with your constituents, friends and families over the past two weeks. I also hope that you took time to rest and rejuvenate your spirits for the resumption of the regular sittings. Part two of the Senate calendar commences today and will run until the rise of the Senate on Thursday, 30th of May, 2024. Now, honorable senators, in the coming days, we expect the Standing Committee on Finance and Budget to table its report on the Division of Revenue Bill. The passage of the Division of Revenue Bill will be followed by the introduction of the County Allocation of Revenue Bill, the County Government's Additional Allocation Bill, and the respective cash disbursement schedules. These are crucial financial instruments for the effective functioning of county governments. I urge the Standing Committee on Finance and Budget to expeditiously conclude on the Division of Revenue Bill, as its conclusion will pave the way for the subsequent financial instruments. As honorable senators are aware, the legislati legislative business before the Senate is heavy. The speaker, in consultation with the Senate leadership, will be Senator Tobiko and ML. May the chair be heard in silence. As honorable senators are aware, the legislative business before the Senate is heavy. The speaker, in consultation with the Senate leadership, will begin to implement measures aimed at expediting the processing of the legislat uh, legislative agenda of the Senate. These measures will include enforcement of time limits on petitions, questions and statements, as well as the time allocation for motions and bills pursuant to the standing orders. In this respect, therefore, and to facilitate expeditious consideration of business, respective movers must be in the chamber whenever their business is scheduled in the order paper. Honorable Senators, as at its meeting held today, the 16th of April 2024, the Senate Business Committee has approved a shield for statements pursuant to Standing Order 56-1B to be issued by committee chairpersons. We look forward to hearing the work that the committees are undertaking, the impact that this work is making, their plans for the next few months, and a report on the status of implementation of resolutions of the Senate. Honorable Senators, concerning facilitation of members of Parliament, the Parliamentary Service Commission has expedited the completion of the Parliamentary Tower, that is Bunge Tower, in order to bridge the deficit in office accommodation for all members of Parliament. The Commission has begun the process of allocation and subsequent occupation of the offices. In this respect, therefore, the Office of the Clerk will shortly issue a circular communicating the allocation of offices to all Senators. The allocation of offices, as is the practice, is based on the order of precedence as set out under Order 3.2 of the Senate Standing Orders. The allocation also takes into account the leadership offices of the Senate. The Sergeant at Arms will ask with the Senators to coordinate the movement into their located offices. Senators are requested to cooperate to make the transition as smooth and seamless as possible. Honorable Senators, as I conclude, I wish to reiterate that my office remains open and accessible to all Senators for consultations and support in the fulfillment of your duties. I wish you a fruitful, uh, fruitful deliberations in the second part of this third session. I thank you, Honorable Senators. Next order, Clerk. Order number three, messages. Honorable Senators, I wish to report to the Senate the pursuant to standing order 46, 3, and 5. I received the following message while the Senate was on recess from the Speaker of the National Assembly regarding the passage by the National Assembly of the Statutory Instruments Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bills Number 3 of 2024.
The message, which is dated Tuesday the 4th of April 2024, was received on, the f on Friday 5th April 2024 in the office of the Clerk of the Senate. Pursuant to the State Standing Order, I now proceed to report the message. Pursuant to the provision of Standing Order 41-1 and 142 of the National Assembly Standing Orders, I hereby convey the following message from the National Assembly. Whereas the Statutory Instruments Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bills No. 3 of 2024, was published via Kenya Gazette, Supplement No. 27, on the 1st of February 2024, as a bill seeking to amend the provision of the Statutory Instruments Act 2013 to enable the Committee on Delegated Legislation to require the reg regulation making authority to submit to Parliament a copy of any regulation that ceases to have e uh, effect by operation of law and to further obligate Parliament to notify the general public in two newspapers of wide circulation that a statutory instrument which ceases to have effect by operation of law is a nullity. And whereas on Thursday, the 21st of March 2024, the National Assembly considered the Statutory Instruments Act, Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bills Number 3 of 2024, and passed it with amendments in the form attached hereto. Further, noting that the National Assembly referred the Statutory Instruments Amendment Bill, National Assembly's Bill Number 2 of 2023, to the Senate for consideration on the 6th of December 2023. The processing of the Statutory Instruments Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bills No. 3 of 2024, be undertaken alongside the earlier bill with a view to harmonizing the two bills. Now, therefore, in accordance with the provisions of Article 110 of the Constitution and Standing Orders 41.1 and 142 of the National Assembly Standing Orders, I hereby refer the said bill to the Senate for consideration. Honorable Senators, the message we received with a request from the leader of majority party in the National Assembly, who is the sponsor of the bill, that the Senate majority leader co-sponsors and introduces the bill in the Senate. Pursuant to the provisions of Standing Order 163.2, which states, before a bill originating from the National Assembly is read a first time in the Senate, the Speaker shall notify the Senate whenever a message is received from the Speaker of the National Assembly naming a senator or senators who have been nominated by the sponsor of the bill to co-sponsor the bill in the Senate. Now, honorable senators, in this regard, therefore, I direct that the statutory instruments, amendment bill, National Assembly bills number three of 2024 be read a first time as listed in today's order paper. I thank you, honorable senators. Before we move to the next order, I have a communication to make. Honorable Senators, kindly hasten to take your seats. Honorable Senators, we wish I would like to acknowledge the presence in the Speaker's Gallery this afternoon, a visiting delegation from the Parliament of Uganda. The delegation comprises members and parliamentary officers of the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Discipline who are on a benchmarking visit with their counterpart committee in the Senate. Now, honorable Senators, I request each member of the delegation to stand when called out so that they may be acknowledged in the Senate tradition. The Honorable Reverend Father Charles Onen, MP, leader of the delegation. Honorable Margaret Aleper Achila. Honorable Alex Ndeizi. Honorable Atikins Katusabe, MP. Honorable Nalulale Aisha Kabanda, MP. Honorable Gabriel Okumu, MP. Honorable Catherine Akumu Mavenjina, MP. Elisha Bafirawala. Alfred Agani Smart. Agatha Akankunda. On behalf of the Senate, on my own behalf, I extend a warm welcome and wish you a fruitful visit. I will call upon the Majority Leader. 
under one minute to extend uh, words of welcome. And thereafter, the youthful senator, the Honorable Oburu Odinga, also to extend a word of welcome. In that order, proceed, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of uh, colleague senators, I do welcome our good friends and neighbors from the country of Uganda, our largest uh, trading partner as a country, and a very important uh, neighbor of ours, that we have enjoyed good neighborly relationship uh, for the last many, many years, uh, Mr. Speaker. It is my sincere hope that we shall continue to build on this, strengthen it, and make it better even for the uh, greater realization of the objectives of both uh, nations, uh, Mr. Speaker. Finally, uh, Mr. Speaker, I do hope that the colleague members of Parliament will uh, find time, uh, Mr. Speaker, to interact with many senators that are here who, for one reason or the other, uh, Mr. Speaker, you know the unfortunate thing is that unless you are a sports person, there is no other formula for interacting with colleague members of parliament from the other East African countries. So I know people like uh, Senator Manzo who play no known sport, uh, Mr. Speaker, either day or night, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, are likely not to have met any other non-Kenyan member of parliament from East Africa. So he should take advantage and greet the colleagues from Uganda uh, on our behalf. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to welcome the delegation from the parliament of uh, our great uh, neighbor, Uganda. Uh, Uganda is not for Kenya. If Kenya was to send ambassadors and high commissioners out of this country, Uganda should get the senior most high commissioner. Because Uganda, I think, in terms of volumes, has the highest uh, uh, the volume of trade with uh, our country, Kenya. I come from the neighboring uh, uh, county of Siaya. We have very cordial relationship with uh, Uganda. And whenever there are any uh, small skirmishes at the border, it is resolved through the administrative process uh, very, very amicably. And uh, the delegation, I've been to the uh, parliament of Uganda, I've seen how vibrant the debates there are. And I'm very, very happy that the Ugandan delegation chose the Senate to come and see how vibrant our Senate also works. Thank you very much. You are welcome to Kenya. Next order, clerk. Order number four, petitions. Order number five, papers. The majority leader. Mr. Speaker, sir. I beg to lay the following papers on the table of the Senate today, Tuesday, the 16th of April, 2024. One, the National Police Service Report for 2023, the County Executive of El Gio Maracuet, County Assembly of El Gio Maracuet, El Gio Maracuet County Assembly Catering Services Revolving Fund, El Gio Maracuet County Assembly Car uh, and Mortgage Revolving Fund, Receiver of Revenue, El Gio Maracuet County Government, County Revenue Fund, El Geo Maracuet County Government, El Geo Maracuet Alcoholics Drinks Control Fund, El Geo Maracuet County Education Fund, County Executive of Isiolo, County Assembly of Isiolo, County Executive of Laikipia, County Assembly of Laikipia, uh, the County Assembly of Laikipia Car Loan and Mortgage Staff Scheme Fund, Laikipia County State and Public Officers Car Loan and Mortgage Scheme Fund, um, County Revenue Fund, Laikipia County Government, Receiver of Revenue, Laikipia County, Laikipia County Revenue F Board, Laikipia County Enterprise Fund, Laikipia County Emergency Fund, Laikipia County Development Authority, Laikipia Carlin and Mortgage Member Scheme Fund, Laikipia County Cooperative Development Revolving Fund, Laikipia County Education Bursary Fund, County Executive of Samburu, County Assembly of Samburu, Samburu County Executive Star Mortgage Member Scheme Fund, Samburu County Persons Living with Disability Fund, 
Samburu County Youth and Women Enterprise Development Fund, Samburu County Bursary Fund, Receiver of Revenue Samburu County Government, Samburu County Conservancies Fund. Mr. Speaker, I beg to lay. Next order, Clerk. Order number six, notices of motion. Order number seven, questions and statements. Statements pursuant to standing order 53-1, the Honorable Senator for Kisumu County, Senator Professor Tom Ojeanda. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise under order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Health concerning the status of health care service provision in all sub-counties in Kisumu County. Mr. Speaker, concerns have been raised about lack of adequate supplies to health care facilities and stalled health care related projects in Kisumu County, with some experiencing inordinate delay, in all of which have a ripple effect on the provision of health care in Kisumu County. In order to encourage the prudent use of county resources, the county executive must be held to account in its implementation of projects. It is in, the, in this regard that I am seeking this statement. In the statement, the committee should, one, examine the state of health facilities in Kisumu County and submit a report on the completion status of all health-related projects for the financial years 2017 to 2024, disclosing the budget expended on each project so far and the budget for completion and equipping of projects in Nyando, Muhoroni, Nyakach, Kisumu East, Kisumu West, Kisumu Central, and Seme sub-counties. Two, state the safety measures in place for the health workers in the said sub-county health facilities, disclosing whether there is protective gear for workers serving in health hazard units and the ratio of protective gear to the workers assigned to the units. And lastly, provide details on the Marwa insurance scheme, including its coverage areas, current enrollment figures, and the beneficiary demographics. Inform on its funding sources and the financial probity, and assess its sustainability and effectiveness considering the national transition to the Social Health Insurance Fund. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Senator for Sengeshu County, Senator Mandago. That statement is dropped. Statements pursuant to Standing Order 56, 1B, the Chairperson Standing Committee on Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries. That statement is dropped. The Chairperson Standing Committee on Devolution and Intergovernmental Relations. Um, Honorable Speaker, I rise, person to study Order 5 6. I'm 56-1B to make a statement of the activities of the Standing Committee on Devolution and Intergovernmental uh, Relations for the period commencing January, March 2024. Honorable Speaker, during the reporting time period, the committee has carried various uh, activities pertaining to the mandates. As a snapshot, the committee has transacted the following legislative businesses. A, the committee considered Two bills which is concluded and tabled in respective reports in the House on 29th, uh, Thursday, February 2024. Uh, the County Government Amendment Bill 2023, Senate Bill Number 25 of 2023, and the County Assembly Service Amendment Bill 2023, Senate Bill Number 34 of 2023. B, the committee has processed 10 statements which were sought from the committee. Of the 10, the committee has considered and concluded two, leaving eight statements pending before the committee. C, the committee held a consultative meeting, a retreat, with the principal secretary of the State Department of Devolution and Intergovernmental Relations Technical Committee, which deliberated on matters relating to devolution and intergovernmental relations, including the status of transfer of devolved functions and the evaluation and verification of assets and liabilities belonging to the counties. 
I'm pleased to report that the two officers have robustly carried out the exercise, the exercise and are at, the, at the final stage of completion. D, in a remarkable display, the committee visited uh, Transzea County and successfully mediated a long-standing dispute between the county governor and his deputy, bringing harmony to the previous strained working relations which had threatened to hamper the smooth running of the county. I think it was a wonderful job done, and the committee has achieved. Uh, the, the deputy governor has not been working with the governor for the last one and a half years. But now that they're working together, and the, uh, this is actually a big achievement for the committee. A, the committee is currently considering matters concerning the alleged discrimination in the implementation of development projects in various wards in Meru. The committee has invited the com government of Meru to submit various documents to the committee that will provide relevant information on the implementation of projects with the county. Additionally, the committee shall conduct a project inspection and public participation in the various wards of the county where the, the aforementioned allegations were made. Honorable Speaker, the situation in Meru is actually still fluid, and we have a lot of uh, uh, communication from uh, various uh, members of the assembly. Uh, that they have been denied development by the county, uh, county government and actually we're obliged to visit the county, I mean the Meru uh, county, so that we can be able to verify all these things. Honorable Speaker, the committee has also future plans. We have planned for the coming sessions period uh, a conduct, to conduct a county visit to Meru to meet the, the, the county governor, deputy governor, the members of the county assembly in the effort of to foster a harmonious working relationship between the stakeholders to ensure that the smooth running of the county affairs be retreat with the deputy governors of all the 40 count, uh, 40, uh, 47 counties to deliberate on matters affecting the effective performance of their official duties in the counties. C, to look into the performance of the counties on implementation of the budget with a few to oversight the utilization of the resources meant for the devolution. D, conduct a post-legislative -legis scrutiny of the Urban Areas and Cities Act of 2011 with the objective of proposing amendments to the framework of the management and governance of the cities and urban areas. E, to look into the process of dissolution of the county government with a view to making proposals on the enhanced role of the Senate in the process and to look into the current laws on, impeachment, on the impeachment of the county governors, including the proposed impeachment procedure bill. Uh, bill. Lastly, uh, Honorable Speaker, I wish to thank your office the office of the Kalak and all the leadership of the House for the support they have given, the city for the support they gave to the, uh, to the committee. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. The Chairperson Standing Committee on Education. Mr. Speaker, sir, I raise the uh, pursuant to Standing Order 561B to make a statement relating to the activities of the Standing Committee on Education for the first quarter of the third session covering the period between 15th February 2024 to 15th April uh, 2024. The Standing Committee on Education is established under uh, uh, Section 2283 of the Senate Standing Orders and is mandated to consider all matters related to education and training. Uh, during the period under review, the committee held 17 sittings, during which it considered 17 statements, two public petitions, one bill, conducted two inquiries, and undertook two county oversight visits. During the same period, the committee hosted one foreign delegation from the Republic of Uganda and held meetings with two counterpart committees from the county assemblies of Kajiado and Tataveta. Mr. Speaker, sir, during the period under review, the Early Childhood Education Amendment Bill, Senate Bills Number 54 of 2023, which seeks to provide for the improved remuneration and better welfare of teachers serving in early childhood centers in the counties, was committed to the committee for consideration. Uh, pursuant to the provisions of Article 118 and Standing Order 145.5 of the standings of the Senate Standing Orders, the committee invited interested members of the public to submit their representations on the bill and further held an engagement with the Council of Governors in order to acquaint itself with the implementation status of the Early Child Development Education ECD policies in the counties and the challenges 
facing implementation of the said policies. Honorable Speaker, sir, the committee has reviewed all the submissions from the stakeholders and had uh, consequently uh, prepared its report on the bill, which is currently undergoing processing for tabling. Mr. Speaker, sir, during the period under review, the committee considered the following two petitions. A, petition concerning the discrimination by Teachers Service Commission on payment of hardship allowances and enhanced house allowance uh, to some teachers in Kilifi County. And B, petition concerning the discrimination in the payment of hardship allowance to teachers in Taita Taveta County. The issues raised in the two petitions are uh, on inclusion and classification of some parts of Kilifi and Taveta, Taveta, Taveta counties ad, as hardship areas and payment of attended hardship allowances to the teachers in these areas. Petitioners in both petitions uh, state that they qualify to be paid hardship allowances as per legal notice number 534 of 1997 and the collective uh, bargaining agreement CBA between Teacher Service Commission TSC and the Teachers Union. During consideration of this petition, Mr. Speaker, the committee sought information and reports from the Cabinet Secretary, Minister of Public Service, Performance and Delivery Management, and the Chief Executive Office of the Teacher Service Commission, TSC. The pre preliminary findings by the committee indicate that there are discrep discrepancies in the designation, designation of hardship areas within various sectors of the public service. The committee was, however, informed that the Minister of Public Service and Gender established an interagency technical committee in March 2019 to examine the current policies on hardship allowances and streamline payment. The committee is therefore scheduled to meet the Cabinet Secretary, Minister of Public Service, Performance and Delivery Management on Thursday, 25th April 2024, to seek supplementary information on the issues raised in the petitions and thereafter prepare its report. Honorable Speaker, the committee regrets delays in conclusion of these petitions, which had been occasioned by the unavailability of sufficient information and reports and frequent requests for postponement of meetings by the Cabinet Secretary, Minister of Public Service, Performance and Delivery and Management. And Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, during the period under review, 15 statements were sought from the committee in addition to 12 statements that were not concluded in the second uh, session. In uh, its consideration, the committee sought reports and responses from the Minister of Education, Teacher Service Commission, county government departments, and other relevant state agencies. The committee has since considered and concluded a total of 17 statements, uh, 17 statements. A comprehensive status of the statements sought from the committee is annexed to this report, Mr. Speaker. During consideration of these statements, the committee identified common thematic areas and invited the Cabinet Secretary, Minister of Education, the Chief Executive Officer of the Teacher Service Commission, and the Chairperson of the Council of Governors to deliberate on the issues raised by members. The reports and responses received from these agencies have since been shared with the members and supplementary issues and matters requiring classification have been referred back in the relevant agencies for additional responses. Honorable Speaker, on Thursday, 28 March 2024, the committee held a meeting with the Cabinet Secretary, Minister of Education, to address concerns raised in the release of computation funds to learning institutions, the infrastructural development, and the congestion of learning institutions in the country. During uh, the second part of the third session, Mr. Speaker, the committee is scheduled to continue engagements and follow up on the implementation status of the policies on the new university funding model and the competence-based curriculum, CBC. The committee is also scheduled to follow up on the government commitment towards expenditures, the release of uh, the competition fund to learning institutions, payment of pending bills by the universities, and the implementation of a medical insurance cover to learners following termination of edu -afia. The committee is also scheduled to hold meetings with the Council of Governors to deliberate on the plight of early child development education, ECDE teachers, and the status of infrastructural uh, projects undertaken by county governments in the education sector. Mr. Speaker, sir, the committee has initiated two inquiries. A, an inquiry into the implementation status of early childhood development education, ECDE, 
policies in the counties and plight of ECD teachers and caregivers and B, an inquiry, an inquiry into the infrastructural development and the congestion of learning institutions in the country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sir, during the period under review, the committee concluded two county vis oversight vis visits. The committee conducted an oversight visit to Taita Taveta County to meet with the petitioners on the petition concerning the discrimination of payment of hardship allowance to teachers in Taita Taveta County and to meet with the governor to deliberate on the issues raised in the statement sought on the management of Taita Taveta County revolving education fund. The committee further conducted an oversight visit to Kajiado County to acquaint itself with the implementation status of early childhood development education, ECD, and technical and vocational education and training to vet policies in the county. Uh, Mr. Speaker, during the first part of this session, the committee hosted members of the Education Policy Review Commission, APRC of the Republic of Uganda, who are in the country for a fact-finding mission the committee was informed that the Education Policy Review Commission was established to investigate issues affecting the education and sports sector in Uganda and to generate recommendations and draft a white paper that is a macro policy framework for education and the sports services. Mr. Speaker, in the period under review, the committee has also had its share of challenges during the processing of the pending legislative business. These include incomplete and unsatisfactory responses from the ministries and government agencies, frequent requests for postponement of the committee meetings by different stakeholders invited to provide information and quorum hitches. As I conclude, I wish to thank the members of the committee for their diligence and contribution during committee activities. I also wish to thank your office and the office of the clerk of the Senate for the continuous support accorded to the committee in its work in exec executing its mandate. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, signed, and this senator is known. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Senator Gloria Orova. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise pass one to standing order 52-1 to make a statement on a matter of uh, general topical concern, namely the 8th International Parliamentarians Conference on the Implementation of the Program of Action of the International Conference on Population and Development, ICPD, that was held in Oslo, Norway from 10th April to 12th April 2024. Mr. Speaker, parliamentarians from across the globe attended the conference, which was held as the world uh, commemorated the 30th anniversary of the adoption of the ICPD Program of Action, Discussions centered around the challenges encountered and opportunities presented in championing sexual and reproductive health and rights. Mr. Speaker, parliamentarians who attended the conference acknowledged the progress made in advancing sexual and reproductive health and rights despite the setbacks encountered due to societal challenges, the COVID-19 pandemic and other global crises. Emphasis was placed on the critical role of parliamentarians in championing and effecting change towards universal access to sexual and reproductive health services, particularly for marginalized groups like women, girls, and those affected by crisis, as well as the elimination of gender-based violence and harmful practices. Mr. Speaker, the parliamentarians also emphasized the parliamentarians also emphasized the need to universal, universally uphold human rights, expressing concern over the global backlash against agendas on sexual and reproductive health and rights. The matter of the disproportionate impact of the climate crisis on vulnerable populations, particularly women and girls, was also discussed. Mr. Speaker, the parliamentarians pledged that moving forward, they would work towards people-centered policies, data-driven solutions, and harness digital technology to strengthen health systems and ensure universal access to sexual and reproductive health services. The parliamentarians also committed to advocating for increased funding for sexual and reproductive health and rights programs and international development assistance in line with the Sustainable Development Goals, aiming to shape a resilient and inclusive post-2030 agenda. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, the conference, reaffirmed parliamentarians, the conference reaffirmed parliamentarians' commitment to advancing sexual and reproductive health and rights 
gender equality and sustainable development uh, globally, recognizing the interconnectedness of these goals in shaping a resilient and equitable future for all. I thank you. Senator Chirange. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir, statement on issue of, of general topical concern on the outstanding performance of our athletes at the Boston Marathon yesterday, Monday. So, Speaker, sir, I raise pass one to standing order 52-1 to make a statement on issue of general topical concern and national importance, namely the outstanding performance of our athletes at the Boston Marathon held on Monday, 15 April 2024. That is yesterday, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. So, Speaker, sir, once again, our athletes have brought immense pride to our country, uh, giving us by the outstanding performance at the Boston Marathon. Our female athletes dominated the event, securing all top positions on the podium, while their male counterparts also demonstrated exceptional prowess. Our athletes displayed extraordinary resilience to emerge victorious in the fierce competition marathon. So, Speaker, sir, in the women's marathon, Ellen Obiri led the podium sweep by, click, by clocking two hours, 22 minutes, and 37 seconds. Followed closely, I would have expected applaud for all the women in there. Followed closely by Sharon Lokedi in under two hours, 22 minutes, and 45 seconds. And of course, our very own, who she is almost 45 years old, Mr. Speaker, sir a mother and a model, Edna Kiplagat, secured third position with a time of two hours, 23 minutes and 21 seconds. In the men's marathon, Evans Chebet, a two-time defending champion, claimed the third place with a time of two hours, seven, seven minutes and 22 seconds, Mr. Speaker, sir. In a race won by Ethiopia's Sisei Lema, with a time of two hours, six minutes and 17, Mr. Speaker, if Kelvin Kiptu may his soul rest in peace, he would have won this marathon under two hours. While John Korir and Albert Korir, both representing Kenya, achieved fourth and fifth position respectively, I extend on behalf of this house our warmest congratulations. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I continue to urge this esteemed house to accord our athletes, sportsmen and women a chance to address the Senate and I think the majority leader and minority leader have made a voice on this, such an opportunity would demonstrate our appreciation for their remarkable achievements in the international stage by flying our flag high always and also motivating them to continue bringing honor to our nation. Mr. Speaker, sir, furthermore, I call upon the Ministry of Sports, Athletics Kenya, and National Olympics Committee of Kenya, NOC, in collaboration with Beijing Sports Competition, an international sports exchange center to provide a comprehensive update on the investigation into concerning an incident during the Beijing Half Marathon. In this incident, it involved our athletes ushering a Chinese marathoner to win a race. And people are making comments that maybe Kenyans are starting to pay the loan by allowing them to win. This, among other issues, Mr. Speaker, sir, such as doping, fixing athletics and sports, uh, tarnish our nation's repute internationally and undermine the principles of fair play and transparency in sportsmanship and kills the spirit of competition. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, I urge our athletes, sportsmen and women, when they are winning, they should win. When they are losing, they should lose, Mr. Speaker. And what we saw in Beijing half marathon is, is very unfortunate, where our, they were supposed to win the three but because uh, they wanted a Chinese to, do the, to win the race, they retreated back. And I think, Mr. Speaker, we must have a comprehensive report on the same. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, through you, I ask the Labor Committee led by my brother, Senator Reverend Julius Murko, the Senator of West Pocot, Chairman, to look into this issue and update the House. I also plead with the Anti-Doping Agency to intensify its efforts to root out unscrupulous agents and coaches who engage in doping and match fixing. They are for jeopardizing the careers of our sportsmen and women and the reputation of our Kenyan sports. I wish to congratulate and call upon Mr. Speaker, the Athletics Kenya, 
uh, uh, the sports that is uh, the, the, the uh, sports of Kenya, that is Football Federation of Kenya, and other sports federation, Mr. Speaker, in this period, to all the election as directed by the courts, Mr. Speaker, and ensure regular elections to allow efficiency in running this, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, I, 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 I think that is important. I wish to congratulate our athletes for the exceptional performance at the Boston Marathon and other major marathons and competition. I wish them well as they prepare to represent our nation at the upcoming Olympics in Paris, France, and assure them of our unfavoring commitment and support and advocating for their welfare and winners more goals. Mr. Speaker, I thank you. Senator Chute. The statement is dropped. Senator Mundigi. That statement is dropped. Senator Siango. That statement is dropped. Senator Ledama Olekina. That statement is dropped. Next order, clerk. Now, Honorable Senators, we'll allow uh, 15 minutes for intervention on the statements that have been sought. Uh, we'll start with uh, the Honorable Senator Wamboa. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I want to make um, two observations on the statement as read by the chairman of education. So, Speaker, the first comment is on the issue of the TSC and the payment of hardship allowance to teachers in Kilifi and Taitataveta counties. The so Speaker, I just want to draw the attention of the committee to the fact that this problem is a lot more widespread than just in Kilifi and in Taylor Taveta. And the speaker, you can uh, restrain uh, Senator Sharage is distracting uh, <laughs> the chair. So, Mr. Speaker, this matter is a lot more widespread than, than would be found in Kilifi and Taita Taveta. I, I do believe that a lot of senators seated in this uh, chamber today have the same problem with TSC I know, I know there is a big problem with TSC in Laikipia, that I know for a fact, on the discrimination on which, which teachers should earn uh, hardship allowance and which teachers should not. So, Speaker, I have a big, big problem in Kitui County, and I know the same could be said by a lot, a lot of other senators here. The Speaker, the committee should find time and reason to interrogate the synergy, if it does exist, between government ministries, state departments, and independent constitutional uh, commissions. Why do I say this? I say this, Mr. Speaker, because this House has passed resolutions on 33 counties that have wards which have been declared as marginalized. I'll give the example of Kitui County. In Kitui County, we have 17 wards that have been declared as marginalized by CRA, and the House has passed that, that declaration. The Speaker, you will find that in those 17 wards, then it should follow automatically that teachers in those wards that are marginalized should benefit from hardship allowances. But what will happen is that in those wards, you will realize there are teachers there who are not benefiting from hardship allowance. The speaker. What is your point of order, Senator Kenyua? Mr. Speaker, I want to concur with what uh, Senator Ambo is saying. But the only thing I want to ask, Mr. Speaker, for purpose of clarity. What is your is, point of order? Yes. And start is by it, quoting the standing order. Yes. Uh, 105. 
if, uh, we are talking about, we are, I'm asking whether he is talking about wards or sublocation, Mr. Speaker, because CRA was very clear it was locations, not wards. Is that a point of information or? Proceed, uh, Senator. I, I'll, I'll proceed, Mr. Speaker. Um, those sublocations are found in wards, uh, uh, my good friend. And I'm very sure the chair, the chair understands what I'm talking about. So, so that synergy, that synergy needs to be established so that one arm of government is not conferring a benefit uh, to, to employees in their department and another arm of government is stripping employees of benefits from the same region. The second issue on uh, that statement is the issue of the ECD uh, scheme of service. The speaker, that is a matter that this house must now pronounce itself on and pronounce itself very, very loudly. The speaker, the scheme of service for ECD teachers, a resolution was passed in this house that there is a standard scheme of service that should be rolled out by all the counties so that you don't have one county that is paying ECD teachers 10,000 shillings a month through M-Pesa, and there is another county that is paying ECD teachers 50,000 shillings through a payroll system. The speaker, the scheme of service for ECD teachers is not something that will be implemented at the whim of a sitting governor. If we don't have that synergy, if we don't have that clarity, Mr. Speaker, what will happen is that there is a reason why ECD is a devolved function. It is so that then children have a strong base on education right from uh, childhood. If we don't have a scheme of service for teachers in ECD uh, classrooms running across all the counties, there will be serious discrimination. As a speaker, the, the purposes for devolving ECD then will be beaten. So the committee, I would ask the speaker, that we must find a way of ensuring that the ECD scheme of service is rolled out uniformly across the counties. Mr. Speaker, I thank you. Senator Mungatana. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to make a comment on the statement by the Honorable Chair Aragay. Mr. Speaker, I was coming um, from my house and I then watched the TV and there is a section where they bring trending news, what Kenyans have been saying and Mr. Speaker, the focus was on what happened during that marathon in which Mr. Speaker, of all countries, a Chinese beats Kenya. Mr. Speaker, it didn't make any sense to me. A Chinese beating Kenya. How on earth, Mr. Speaker, does that happen? And Mr. Speaker, when, when I looked, when I listened to the conversation, Mr. Speaker, it emerged that Kenyans were making very serious observations, including the fact that the, 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 there was in the past much fixing. Now it is emerging a new trend, rest fixing. And Mr. Speaker, the country's integrity was being discussed online, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what the Honorable Senator Cherard K has said today, that investigations must be carried. I want to use the floor of this house, Mr. Speaker, to say that Kenya has obtained a special space in Africa where I sit, Mr. Speaker, in Pan-African Parliament. Every time people expect us to be athletic, even Mr. Speaker, when they look at me, they, I am a disappointment because I don't look as tall and as athletic as I should. But they have this image of how a Kenyan should be. So, Mr. Speaker, we have obtained a special place in the continent and in the world because of how we have projected athletics in Kenya and the medals we have won. So, Mr. Speaker, we are jeopardizing the good name of Kenya. 
And Mr. Speaker, some of the reasons that were being given is that, oh, this Chinese is my friend, so I was letting him to pass. Mr. Speaker, we have discussed here and said they will be given some incentives, tax-free something. When they come home, we will, uh, we will honor these athletes. Why on earth would someone sell the good name of our country? Uh, because of, you know, these are the Judas Iscariots, Mr. Speaker, who sold the Lord Jesus Christ for pieces of silver. Mr. Speaker, they are selling this country for pieces of silver. And, they, and it is very serious, Mr. Speaker. So we want this investigation in support of this statement, Mr. Speaker, not just to be carried out in a casual manner. There should be serious investigation by Athletics Kenya, and they should involve state agencies that are competent in that area so that we can take the blame to where it belongs and the people who are involved in this scam, Mr. Speaker, they must be punished because we cannot sacrifice the name of our country because some people want to get uh, a few pieces of silver. Mr. Speaker, I support. Thank you. Senator Momo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to speak. Allow me to contribute to the statement by Senator Gloria Oruoba. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, Honorable Milio Diambo and myself also attended the ICPD, uh, that is the International Conference on Population and Development that was held in Oslo, courtesy of a parliamentary caucus, uh, the East and Southern uh, Africa parliamentary caucus that is a caucus of members of parliament who have an interest in addressing matters uh, relating to sexual reproductive health uh, issues. In addition to what Senator Gloria has uh, provided or uh, presented to the House, I wish to indicate that I will uh, uh, share a copy of a declaration that was made on the last day of this conference. Uh, Mr. Speaker, one issue that I would want to highlight in this matter is an issue we discussed as parliamentarians from Eastern and Southern Africa, we discussed the issue of discussing prostate cancer as one of the sexual reproductive issues that is becoming problematic in our region. Mr. Speaker, uh, I would want to raise this issue and to call to the attention of all our members that matters relating to sexual reproductive health affect families and actually affect development in this country. I wish to ask that both male and female uh, uh, members of parliament and uh, senators should take greater interest in this issue. Uh, Mr. Speaker, if you read the Kenyan Health Demographic Survey, you'll find very disturbing statistics, including very high teen pregnancies, ch girls dropping out of school, young men uh, actually having fertility problems because they are not able to access proper sexual reproductive health uh, services, including the most important, which is comprehensive sex education that would be able to avert a number of the things that are happening. I raise this to ask that the matter sexual reproductive health be treated as very crucial to this country and not be treated as an issue for women and an issue that should be relegated to the back uh, 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 of any discussion. So I'm calling on all of us, and I will table the declaration that we had, that beyond that declaration, let us take an interest in matters relating to sexual reproductive health in Kenya and see how we can help our young men, our young women, and particularly adolescent girls who are becoming casualties because we are not uh, putting in place the necessary policies and laws to support them. I support uh, Mr. Speaker. Senator Aaron, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to join my colleagues who are expressing uh, their views on various statements that have been shared. I'm particularly curious about the statement by Senator Samson Tirargay. Uh, I join him in congratulating our athletes uh, who did extremely well uh, in keeping up with our tradition, uh, Mr. Speaker, as a powerhouse in athletics. 
ensuring, and I know the um, members of parliament from Uganda are still in the house, Madam Speaker. Uganda has been threatening to take this mantle from us, but we are one people, so it's not a big concern to us, uh, Mr. Speaker. But I congratulate uh, Madam Helen Obiri uh, for a stellar performance, Mr. Speaker, in Boston, uh, winning the title. Uh, Mr. Speaker, alongside the Edna Kiplagat and the lady who finished second, whose name skips my mind, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, Sharon, uh, Mr. Speaker, Ms. Madam Speaker, uh, rather, Madam Speaker, I am also concerned, uh, just like Senator Mungatana, uh, on that incident in China. But as a sportsman, I know that anything is possible in sports. Therefore, I don't agree with his sentiments, Mr. Speaker, that how can a Chinese beat Kenyans? If Aston Villa can beat Arsenal immediately after Liverpool has lost when you're supposed to be gunning for the title, then even a Chinese can beat a Kenyan, Mr. Speaker. Nothing is, not po is impossible in sports, uh, Madam Speaker. Therefore, Senator Mungatana, uh, many odd things happen in sports uh, uh, many times. Therefore, it's, it's not necessarily the case that those Kenyans that were defeated by the Chinese, uh, Mr. Speaker, might have been compromised. But it would be important, just for the record, uh, Mr. Speaker, that the, Madam Speaker, that the race organizers update the world because everybody uh, is concerned whether this was genuine because it appeared to me from the final sprints of that particular uh, race, Madam Speaker, as if these were the pace uh, setters, uh, Madam Speaker. But... Uh, it is for the race organizers to let us as a country and the world of sports to know what really happened. Finally, Madam Speaker, is to agree with Senator Cherargue that we need elections in athletics Kenya as soon as yesterday, the same way the courts directed, uh, Madam Speaker. Kenya is preparing to participate in the 2024 uh, Paris Olympics, uh, Madam Speaker, and there is a whole lot of confusion. And I'd wish that the Minister for Sports, C.S. Ababu, can come out a bit more clear with a roadmap, having a meeting with these, all these stakeholders, together with the athletes, the officials, sit down and agree on the way forward, Madam Speaker, because sports cannot be relegated to be just another industry that is performing dismally as we watch. I know we have a similar uh, problem that is looming, Madam Speaker, in our football, because there are supposed to be FKF elections, the courts have denied FKF from holding an AGM because there are uh, disagreements among us, the membership. We want to tell CS Ababu Namwamba to take the lead in resolving the issues around athletics and sports because these are extremely important industries that provide employment opportunities to many of our young people, Madam Speaker, who are able to ply uh, their trade by either playing football, Madam Speaker, or running in the various capitals of the world. Therefore, it is my humble request to the minister to be more vocal, be at the center of this conversation, Mr. Speaker, and update the country so that we are settled and we know that there is a plan and our athletes and sportsmen, uh, Mr. Speaker, in football, in rugby, in athletics, uh, Mr. Speaker, are not going to waste their talent due to wrangles in the various unions, uh, uh, Madam Speaker. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Majority Leader. Um, Apparently, the time for comments on statements has lapsed, but I'll add in uh, just maybe two or three. Senator Osotsi. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for the opportunity. Uh, allow me to speak on the two statements. One, the statement by the Chair of Education, and two, the statement by the Chair of Devolution. Uh, I want to echo the sentiments made by the Senator for Kitui, Senator Wambua, on the ECD. Madam Speaker, if there is one thing that uh, I would encourage the Education Committee to handle is the issue of ECD. I think Senator Wambua has rightly put it, that this House passed a resolution to have a uniform ECD uh, scheme of service, but that is not implemented because uh, different counties have different schemes of service. Madam Speaker, as we are speaking now, in my county, the ECD teachers have been on strike for close to two months now. 
and the issue is in court. Nothing seems to be happening. And it uh, looks like the governor and his executive, they are unable to resolve this problem. I think the Senate has to stamp his authority and insist that we need to have a uniform scheme of service for the ECD teachers and also resolve issues around ECD uh, teachers in our counties. Madam Speaker, the second issue is on devolution. I am so impressed that the Committee of Devolution went to Transoya and resolved the uh, challenge we are having between the governor of Transoya and the deputy governor. I think the same spirit must be escalated to all other counties which are facing uh, similar challenges, and there are many. So the Committee of Devolution, I think you are like the front end of the Senate. It is a committee that handles cross-cutting issues for all other committees. And I think when we hear that they are uh, addressing current issues, I think that's the pride of uh, this Senate. But we have other issues, Mr. Uh, Madam Speaker, which I think the Committee of Devolution can help this House. Mr. Speaker, we were so shocked that a member of this House was attacked by goons hired by a governor in the process of doing his job. That is Senator Okio Mtata of Busia. Those are things that we don't want to hear. And uh, I want to encourage Senator Bass, who is the chair of Devolution Committee, to pick up on such issues because this house dis exists to protect devolution under Article 96 of the Constitution. If we have a scenario where we are uh, either attacked or, or, or stopped from doing our job uh, using politics or using goons or, or scaring us, Mr. Speaker, then we have a problem with devolution in this country. So I want to encourage the Committee of Devolution to do more than they are doing. Mr. Speaker, as we are speaking now, most of our counties have not received their disbursement. Uh, January, February, and March. And you know this late disbursement of uh, money to our counties also brings other issues, including corruption. So we want to encourage the Committee of Devolution, working closely with the Committee of Finance, to find a permanent remedy to this problem. Because we don't want to be told that uh, employees in counties have not been paid, or governors have had to go to the banks to get very expensive loans to pay salaries. Those are things which derail devolution in this country. And I want to encourage the committee to look at real issues affecting devolution in this country and address. Mr. Speaker, there is also a statement by Senator Ujenda on health. Mr. Speaker, this is one area that requires a lot of focus by this house. You have continuously referred to me as Mr. Speaker. Ah, sorry. Please note the change on the uh, chair. Me, uh, Madam Speaker, you know, we had uh, Senator uh, Speaker Kingi there, so that is still in our mind. Even Majority Leader also did the same thing. So I'm sorry for that. I wanted to say that the health issues in this country we have done so well as a Senate on matters of agriculture, fake fertilizer. I want to thank the Committee for Agriculture for coming out very strongly to de in dealing with that problem. But Mr. Speaker, the Senate is nowhere on matters of doctor strike. And yet health is a default function. So I want to encourage the Committee for Health, led by Governor Senator Mandago, to wake up and take the lead on the matter of doctor strike in this country. Where is Senate? At least we are seeing National Assembly, but health is devolved largely. So I want to encourage my co-chair, uh, Senator Mandago, and the committee members, including Senator Hamida, who is seated next to me, very strong member of the health committee, to take the lead and help in resolving the current problem of the doctor's strike. Ms. Madam Speaker, I support. Thank you. Senator Chiradiki Samson.
Thank you, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity. And it's good to see you safe and sound. I saw yesterday what was happening in Muranga, and I was worried about. I hope the office should provide necessary and add more security to you, but I'm happy it was your home in Kigumo. Said, Madam Speaker, many people saw the fracas more than what you contributed for those women, which is more than five million, and we congratulate you for organizing. I just want to appeal you to bring peace in Muranga. Muranga is one of our best and most loyal counties to Kenya Kwanzaa administration. So we are keen in what happens. But in future, invite some of us who are tacticians when it comes to such issues. And we'll ensure you are well protected, Madam Speaker. And thank you for doing a good job alongside other leaders, uh, uh, Madam Speaker. And I know you know where the fire is at the moment. Madam Speaker, I just want to make a few comments. One is on the report by the chair, who coincidentally happens to be your senator, Senator New too. Uh, on the issue of, I didn't hear something about the teacher's promotion by TAC. We know there was you and crime, Madam Speaker, where the promotion appeared skewed and disfavored to most of the teachers, uh, ma ma Madam Speaker. Uh, we didn't, the interviews were done, promotions were done, but the, the teachers feel that there was insufficiency in terms of taking in of their interest, Madam Speaker. So I want to ask the committee, and just the way the Agriculture Committee has been proactive on the issue of uh, fertilizer, Madam Speaker, and I'm happy courtesy of your office, I was able to host them on Tuesday last week. We need also Education Committee to be proactive, to tell the country how many teachers were pro promoted, how, what was the criteria, what basis, what is demography, is it across the entire nation, Madam Speaker? Because as per Article 10 on national values and principles of good governance, we must see regional balance. We must re balance in terms of promotion, uh, Madam Speaker, and ensure it becomes career progression, Madam Speaker. You know, when you are working for a particular prog uh, profession and there is no career progress, Madam Speaker, it is unfair. So I want to call upon and ask the TSE also to be transparent. And to be fair, and I'm happy I'm seeing a number of committee members of education led by the chair, Madam Speaker. Let us, let TSC be honest. Who did they promote? What was the criteria? What did they do it, Madam Speaker? Secondly, Madam Speaker is on ECD. I remember in the last session, and a number of us are lucky to be here, we had dispensed of the issue of ECD. We want a standardized scheme of service. For example, my ECD teachers in Nandi County are preparing to go on a strike. Because apparently there has been no harmonization in terms of schemes of service. And you know, ECD teachers play a unique role, Madam Speaker. These are the people when your child just starts works, they, they don't only teach our children learning, but they also teach them manners. They also assist them in using even uh, toilet facilities, how to be clean, how to tuck in. You can imagine a county, one county is paying 10,000 shillings, another is paying 20,000. We must have an harmonized ECD standard scheme of service, Madam Speaker, so that as a country we can be proud of our ECD teachers. And I think the Education Committee, I agree, but they are taking long. I want to ask them to fast track and give us the status of ECD, status implementation in terms of that is going on across the country, Madam Speaker. And therefore, please, the ECD teachers, and then if the Education Committee in conclusion, Madam Speaker, feel that we need a national legislation, as a Senate and National Assembly and a Parliament, we are ready to do a national legislation that will bring a standardized scheme of service. But we are not trying to encroach on the role, of, uh, on the role that we have in terms of devolved, ECD being devolved. And that is why I had my brother, my neighbor, uh, Senator Godfrey Otsotsi, and I want him to advise his colleagues of coalition because they have been blaming government, national government for doctor strike. I'm happy what he said, health being devolved, he should be saying it on Sundays and in funeral services, Madam Speaker, so that we are fair in this country. I would, in fact, request him to go. I can facilitate and organize him to do a press conference after this at the media center and tell the nation, even that we are alive, Madam Speaker, and tell the nation health is devolved. And teachers, <laughs> doctors, Madam Speaker, must be told because Would Madam Speaker... Would you like to be informed by your colleague, Senator Totsi? No, he will misinform and mislead okay. me. <laughs> In equal measure, <laughs> Madam Speaker, because what I'm saying, I wish and I, I saw the leader of minority in the, in the lower house 
blaming the president and national government. Yet the, the coalition members are senators here. They should be informing the likes of Opio and I and the rest of the brigade in the, in the minority side in the lower house that health is devolved. Where is the voice of governors, Madam Speaker? Why is it when we are doing division of revenue for health, governors are very comfortable, they complain and they shout the loudest. But when it comes to strike of health workers, you don't see governors, Madam Speaker. And I'm disappointed but I, by the health committee and I'm happy Senator Amida Kibwana is here, my very good friend and I thank her and alongside uh, Senator Richard Onyonga and many members who attended our breakfast meeting of open governance in the morning at Sarova Stanley, that they should have taken an initiative, Madam Speaker, and even address as a Senate, this is a devolved function. But I'm saying, and I, I'm, I'm asking the country, me I was a pupilage, and uh, with a lot of respect to my pupil master, uh, Madam Sarah Karuga, I was never paid even a penny, but doctors who are in terms who are not yet qualified doctors are paid 70,000, Madam Speaker. Yet you as a lawyer, senior lawyer in this country and the SG emeritus of the ruling party, you are never paid as a pupilage, Madam Speaker. If we want to be fair, there is a saying that all animals are equal, but the others who are more equal than the others, Madam Speaker. So if we have to pay in terms doctors 70,000 or 200,000, we must pay in other professionals, engineers, doctors, even pastors and clergy and priests who are still training to be doctors, Madam Speaker. They must be paid also so that we are fair in this country, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, and that is why I'm saying, Madam Speaker, in conclusion, I know we are pressed for time. The issue of doctor's strike is a devolved function. In fact, what President is doing is offering an, a service, is just being a gentleman. But the people who should address the issue of doctors is Council of Governors, Madam Speaker. Why are they cowing and hiding now? But when it comes to sharing, they will say, and that is why, Madam Speaker, some of the people are proposing that health be, be, be reversed to the national government, Madam Speaker. And therefore, with those very many remarks, Madam Speaker, I thank you and I, I support with these comments, order, Madam Speaker. I rise on uh, standing order number 105 on uh, statement of fact. Madam Speaker, uh, Senator Cheregei. You know, who if has it's on Senator Cheregei, he's already retired his arguments and yeah. resuming but his seat. I had blessed my. So it's overtaken. Point of order you take earlier. him up at another opportunity yes, please, uh, because now he's already resumed his seat. You'll have another chance maybe when he goes. Can off I again. inform him? No, he's, he does not want to be informed. He must be on the floor. Senator Gloria Oruoba will be the last person to speak on this. Very few minutes, Senator, and we move to the next Thank, one. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for uh, considering giving me this opportunity. I want to support the Senator Chirarge's uh, statement on the performance of our athletes. Uh, Madam Speaker, first of all, let me just say that... Uh, I was very impressed, and I think this is a clear indication that when we are pushing for affirmative action, you can see some of the results, even in the field of athletics. You've seen how our girls performed, and you know some people might not really understand when, when uh, we celebrate Helen O'Beary's win. Because if you look at the time that she used for that marathon, 2 hours, 22 minutes, and 37 seconds, I wonder how long Senator Cherarge can take to run that marathon. So that we put it in perspective, uh, Madam Speaker. She did an excellent job, and uh, together with Sharon and Edna, I would like to congratulate them. Madam Speaker, there is a very important uh, message in this statement for Senator Cherarge in terms of calling on Athletics Kenya to investigate and ensure that we don't have unscrupulous agents in that industry. Madam Speaker, what we witnessed, and I thank you, Senator Danson Mungatana, for actually clarifying that. What we witnessed is what we call match fixing. Because there's absolutely no way, based on what I saw with my own two eyes, that those uh, Chinese athletes beat the Kenyans. There's no way. That was, um, that was match fixing outright. And uh, Madam Speaker, you know, we know that the economic times are hard, even for the Chinese and for the Kenyans. But uh, we should not uh, allow this kind of corruption into the field of athletics. Because match fixing, obviously we know 
that someone was sat down and told, you know, just agree not to win and then we are going to pay you some money. And so some, the investigation needs to be done because if this continues, you are going to see our athletes ensuring that they win the first match to show their, 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 their powers or whatever. And then they go on the back door and start negotiating with Chinese on how they are going to, you know, uh, uh, allow them to win a, a marathon. So, Madam Speaker, I think if the Minister for uh, Sports, Honorable Abab Namwambu, is listening, uh, the call is very clear that there is some very shoddy business going on behind the scenes, and he needs to literally act on it before it is devolved down to our training centers in the grassroots on the county levels. Because, Madam Speaker, we know, and not to be discriminati discriminative, that the, these Chinese, they are very industrious. We could be here talking about it, and there's a whole operation going on in, in, uh, in uh, Nandi, where Senator Chirarge comes from. So, Madam Speaker, congratulations to, to the girls. And again, I want to say that the issue of unscrupulous agents has to be dealt with, and match fixing needs to be talked about and to be dealt with from the top. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Senators. That's the end of the statement hour and the debate on the statements. I uh, will now um, reorder the, the order paper. I will reorganize the order paper and I will call order number 17. Order number 17, the National Rating Bill, National Assembly Bills number 55 of 2022, second reading. Majority Leader. Not yet. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the National Rating Bill, Senate Bill number 55 of 2022, be now read a second time. Madam Speaker, this is a very important uh, piece of legislation. Among us, the many that we have considered as a House, this one particularly, uh, Madam Speaker, apart from the annual Division of Revenue Bill, where we send funds and divide after divide, dividing of revenue horizontally, uh, Madam Speaker, between the national and the county governments, this is one of those bills, Madam Speaker, that seeks to add more into the port of our counties, Madam Speaker, so that they may be able to deliver services to the people of Kenya. Madam Speaker, the National Rating Bill was published in the Kenya Gazette Supplement Number 185 of 2022 and passed by the National Assembly on 11th of October 2023. Thereafter, the bill was referred to the Senate for consideration. The principal object, Madam Speaker, of this particular bill is basically just to provide a legislative framework for the imposition of property taxes on land and buildings by county governments pursuant to Article Number 209.3a of the Constitution. You know, Madam Speaker, many times this House has discussed, and I have seen Senators, some of you have not raised this issue, where you find in your county, your governor post a big billboard in Yamira town and says, I have given people free uh, penalty waiver, uh, I have made, uh, land rates are free, and those kind of uh, things. Just trying to do uh, what you'd consider ordinarily to be populist politics, Mr. Speaker, without knowing that they are actually denying revenue, Madam Speaker, that would have been used to develop our counties, uh, Madam Speaker. And it is for absence of a national legislation that guides how this process is done, um, uh, Madam Speaker, for our counties actually to, bul uh, to build and back up their own source, uh, revenue sources. Therefore, this is one such opportunity for our county governments, uh, Madam Speaker, to think uh, through this. So it provides a buoyant source of revenue for county governments. The revenue is necessary, of course, to enable each county government to perform their functions as assigned by the county governments. Each of our county governments, Senator Mungatana, uh, Senator, all senators actually that you can think of, I don't know of a county government that meets its own source revenue targets. Yet, if as a house we do not take deliberate space and time 
to ensure that we guide our county governments by providing national legislation that will guide how this exercise is done across the county. We have, done, we have tried it for three terms of, of, uh, of the county governments, 2013 to 2017, 2017 to 2022, and presently. If you leave it to the talents or lack of the same of our various county governments to find ways of raising on source revenue, Madam Speaker, then we know what the results are. We know that there are very few county governments that have grown their own source revenue since uh, the inception of devolution by an equation even similar to what the economic growth is. Many of them actually, Madam Speaker, to, the, uh, to utter dismay of colleague uh, senators and members of the public, have actually their source revenue sources dipping, despite the fact that people can practice that applies across all the 47 counties. Don't leave it to your county gov uh, governments alone. Uh, Madam Speaker, and that is a responsibility uh, rating bill. It is my sincere hope that as a House we shall also reflect on what are the standards of collecting other forms of taxes on on source revenue. Is there a way to standardize and ensure that there is legislation such as the bill that is presently before the Finance and, and Budget uh, Committee of a unified uh, system uh, Madam Speaker, of collecting these revenues, especially electronically, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, you will recall that at the inception of this administration, when the president stuck to his guns and led the government in insisting that all government services must be paid via the e-citizen platform, they were all manner of hue and cry. But somehow, many of those noises have since disappeared. Either people have since learned that it is impossible to bully such an administration, or a speaker that is determined on doing the right thing, sometimes, though sometimes not very popular, but the right thing in the long run. Therefore, we must also begin that conversation in ensuring that every of the taxes that are being levied and paid for by our people in our county governments, so that it becomes impossible, Madam Speaker, for people to pilfer for these resources, that they are paid electronically, so that there is a trace, and they are paid using a system that is accountable from reputable firms, not having systems, Madam Speaker, that has what is colloquially referred to by governors, a T-junction. A T-junction, Madam Speaker, means that from the source where the citizen is paying to the bank account of the county revenue fund, there is a T somewhere where there is a leakage, and the governor of that particular county has a chance to leak something small out of it. We need reputable firms, uh, Madam Speaker. That's why we are providing it in legislation, so that we will provide the standards upon which what are these companies that can provide? Is it even possible to have one system that applies across the county, controlled by the county governments? There's a very lazy argument, Madam Speaker, that is being peddled. That, oh, that is a clobber on devolution. If you have a system that is applied across all the 47 counties, what is the problem? What citizens want is for them to pay their taxes and to see those taxes being used prudently in their counties. Nobody is saying that you propose a system where those resources will come to the to the, uh, what is it called, to the national government kitty, Madam Speaker. But we want it to be traceable, verifiable, a means through which citizens know if a poor old lady that is selling Esaga in Keumbu market, where Senator Omogeni comes from, pays her 20 shillings, Madam Speaker, as the market rates for the day, then that 20 shillings goes to the coffers of Nyamira County government and it translates as service for her so that we just don't collect taxes from ordinary citizens, Madam Speaker, and because a good number of it has been pilfered, then there is no commensurate service for the same. How many towns, how many centers, Madam Speaker, do you know that there are people from the county governments, for example, who collect taxes? But if you go to that town, you can't find even a toilet, Madam Speaker. You can't find sanitation facilities. Yet the county governments continue to collect uh, taxes on, uh, on that particular uh, market, Madam Speaker. Therefore, that is why as Senate we must take the lead in this conversation. If you rely it and leave it to the imagination of our county governments alone, uh, Madam Speaker, then we will be abetting our responsibility as the House that is charged with the responsibility of giving out legislation that enhances and entrenches uh, devolution. And this is one such uh, legislation, uh, Madam Speaker.
Article 2095 of our Constitution confers on us as Parliament the powers to regulate the exercise of fiscal responsibility by county governments, which is what I was just speaking about a few minutes ago. It is important to understand, Madam Speaker, that the fourth schedule of the Constitution, that in the fourth uh, schedule of the Constitution, counties are charged with numerous functions and responsibilities. The imposition of property taxes on lands and buildings by county governments will be essential for generating local revenue to fund critical public services, infrastructure, and community development uh, initiative. Above that, Madam Speaker, it also provides a fair and equitable means of taxation, ensuring that property owners contribute to the financing essential services in proportion to the value of their properties. Many strong institutions that have got the financial muscle are able actually to negotiate in colluding with uh, land officers in the various counties, Madam Speaker, pay taxes less than what is due to them. Taxation must be fair, Madam Speaker. You must be taxed in an amount that is commensurate to the value of what you're holding and the benefit that you get from a county government, Madam Speaker. If you are charging a boda boda operator or a mamamboga, Madam Speaker, in a particular market, 20 or 50 shillings to operate in a particular market, then within the same market, somebody who has a wholesale or a supermarket, Madam Speaker, is simply being charged 500 shillings as license or 1,000 or whatever amount, uh, Madam Speaker, for the entire uh, financial year, then it brings to four the conversation about equity. Is it fair? Is it just? This provides the opportunity for us as a country to have this conversation and say that taxation by our various forms and arms of county government, Madam Speaker, is fair and can be traced uh, uh, Madam Speaker, we have challenges. Those of us that have come from counties that have multinationals uh, operating within, within them, Madam Speaker, where you find for an acre of land, the tea multinational estates, for example, for those of us that come from the tea growing areas, many of them up to date, the land rates that they pay are valuations of as late as 1994, Madam Speaker, when I was a six-year-old boy. I have come to the Senate right now, and they are still paying that particular amount because of absence of such a law. That is why this is very personal to some of us, and we need to quickly pass this legislation, Madam Speaker, so that there is a standardized format determined and passed nationally here in the national government so that counties are left to implement and collect uh, the resources. And it's not left to the negotiations, uh, Madam Speaker, because I know, for example, in the T sub sector, when we go to meetings with them, they say, oh, we have agreed with this county government, but we didn't agree with the other. We don't want these back-end agreements. We want agreements, Madam Speaker, that can be verified, that can be scrutinized, and that can easily be traced back, Madam Speaker. Part 7, Madam Speaker, as I move towards a conclusion, to seven, part 7 to 20 of this bill, Madam Speaker, contains provisions of the duty to levy rates by county governments and the principles they need to adhere, uh, Madam Speaker, in accordance to PFM. It, de it defines actually who the owner is, the mandate and the requirements of ensuring that the rates are paid. Of course, it even provides for forms of rating, the notice of rating, rating struck, the notice of rate, payments and remissions, discounts, waivers, uh, uh, enforcement of payment of rates, and so on and so forth, Madam Speaker. Basically, this is the engine of this particular legislation, providing for all what I have described earlier above. Clause 21 to 25 of the bill, Madam Speaker, provides powers, uh, an appointment and powers of valuers, which provides the criteria for one to be appointed as a valuer and give responsibilities to this valuer, Madam Speaker, so that the chief government valuer with respect to standardization and harmonization and preparation and implementation of the valuation of roles across uh, our various counties, so that it's standardized. I think I've spent significant time explaining and giving context why it is important for us to have this standardized across all the counties. It need not be different from Kisumu and Kericho and Mombasa and all these other places. The chief government value are set in consultation with the uh, county governments, Madam Speaker, so that the valuation role is standardized, Madam Speaker. I have given example that many counties, I know, for example, in my county, uh, uh, Senator Muma, as you drive towards uh, 
uh, Kericho town. All that land that you see and you admire and you take pictures from, the valuation role that is being used was last updated in 1994. That's why we are providing standardization of exercise so that we know what is the frequency of updating the master valuation role with our various county government. Within what time should it be updated so that the same can be done. There are property owners, for example, in your county of Kisumu, who on one file you find that the valuation for this uh, business owner last reads the, the value for 1990. And for the next one, just next door, they have their property because maybe they recently purchased it, therefore it has a more recent value of 2023. Is that fair? It's not fair. And that's why the important uh, proposal to have this standardized. Clause 26 to 36 of the bills, uh, Madam Speaker, contain provision on the valuation rating. This part gives the general basis of valuation, declaration of rateable areas, methods to be used for valuation, uh, Madam Speaker, preparation and cons uh, con uh, contents of valuation roles, supplementary valuation together with the alteration. Publication of role, the objections thereof and exceptions are provided for in part. Uncontested draft valuation role and the draft supp supplementary valuation role are also provided for in clause 35 of the bill. Very important as I mentioned. Clause 37 to 53 contains the provisions of the National Rating Tribunal, Madam Speaker. This part seeks to establish a tribunal with part-time members. The jurisdiction of the trib tribunal is specified under Clause 39. The part also provides for the conduct of proceedings, the quorum, declaration of uh, disclosure of interest, powers of the tribunal, remuneration, staff tribunal, penalty of failure to comply with tribunal's lawful uh, order, appeal mechanisms from the tribunal. Madam Speaker, basically, this is setting up of the tribunal that will listen to these disputes. However, I am a bit concerned with the issues of tribunals. And it's good as I say this, uh, Senior Counsel Omogeni is here, and very many other lawyers are here. The reason we send or we set up tribunals in our law is that it is expected that they will be the first court of, inst uh, uh, of reporting when there is a dispute. However, there is an emerging practice where judges, either in the high court or magistrates, are listening to matters that have not even originally been dealt with at tribunal level, be it at the sports uh, dispute tribunal, uh, Madam Speaker. Political parties are also complaining about this, that there are many matters that you find a judge making a determination of a matter that has not even been uh, uh, dispensed or discussed at a particular tribunal. Environmental tribunal, uh, Madam Speaker, exists, and you find petitioners quickly rush to the High Court for one reason or the other, and a judge makes pronouncements on this particular issue. Then why do we set up tribunals? The reason why we set up all these tribunals, Madam Speaker, is that it is believed that these little courts have got the known expertise on that particular field better than any other individual outside that particular jurisdiction that they can be able to dispense and listen to the issues that are being canvassed and make the proper determination. Therefore, this is an area of serious concern, and I hope that the Chief Justice, together with those that serve in JSC, need to consider and properly perhaps issue guidelines to members of judiciary on the various tribunals so that this particular uh, tribunal that we are setting up does not suffer the fate like many of these tribunals that we have in the country that are often bypassed, uh, Madam Speaker, by petitioners and who head to high court and immediately uh, get attention on their matters without first going through uh, the set procedure. So part five, Madam Speaker, basically establishes the national rating tribunal that will hear and handle all those disputes. Part six, Madam Speaker, of the bill are just miscellaneous provisions and notices of repeal of CAP 266 and 267, which is a guiding law, uh, even as we speak today, on these matters of uh, 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 rating. And I don't know how old this particular uh, law is. must be extremely uh, old. Finally, Madam Speaker, Clause 56 of the, and 57 of the bill contains the proposed regulations and savings and transition of any written national and county laws relating to valuation. Just to preserve, if there have been counties that have been diligent to set up their own uh, national uh, rating uh, or county uh, specific and valuation roles, Madam Speaker, um, then 
this bill actually proposes to save such and doesn't delete them. Therefore, with those very many remarks, I want to urge colleague senators to debate this bill and uh, make critical addition and proposals on how to better it because it is for the betterment of our county governments and to cure a challenge that is real and that all our 47 county governments continue to struggle with. With those many remarks, Madam Speaker, I beg to move and request the Senator for Tana River, Senator Danson Buya Mungatana, to second. Senator Mungatana, thank you. <coughs> thank you. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker. May I take this opportunity, Madam Speaker, to thank the majority leader, who is the mover of this bill, for very eloquently, in his usual style, explain this bill very well. And I know senators who are listening will agree with me that we are here in this bill to discuss about own source of revenue for the counties from where we come from. Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, own source revenue has become a real big challenge, very big challenge, because many, many counties, including my county, we have not really had a law such as this that will allow proper access to funds from property taxes. Madam Speaker, even the more developed counties like Nairobi and Mombasa and Kisumu and Wasingishu, Madam Speaker, when you look at their uh, collection of, uh, through the rating process, again, it is having a lot of challenge because the legal framework for collection the standardization does not exist. And yet, Madam Speaker, property rating is one of the most fundamental ways and most reliable ways of uh, making uh, good uh, the targets of on source revenue. Madam Speaker, when we had the debate on the Finance Act, one of my relatives who lives in the U.S. Uh, called me and told me, what is the big fuss about this? And as I was trying to explain, he told me, you know, in our state where we live, in one of the states in the U.S., we depend on property taxes to finance all our activities here. We are really focused on rating. That is what helps us to finance the activities within our own state. So they, they could not uh, relate why we were having a big fight about the finance bill in this place. So this brings to fore, Madam Speaker, the question of rating, the question of own source revenues for our counties. Madam Speaker, in our county, we are, I think, the third uh, lowest when it comes to collection of on source revenue because we depend on, despite the fact that we have a very large uh, area, landmass in Tana River County, we have not been able to benefit from rating that land, Madam Speaker. What we depend on, Madam Speaker, it is what you will collect from, uh, you know, auctions from goats, from, uh, you know, cows, from camels. Madam Speaker, very little revenue. And then they go to the market also, very little revenue. Madam Speaker, the county government also becomes very rough sometimes, even before they have passed their own finance act. They go to bar owners, to shop owners within trading centers, and they tell them now, this has increased, like they were doing in our headquarters in Hola. They tell the traders and the business people that we have increased the rates, even before the Finance Act came into, into being, into effect. They then tell you, if you are not paying, 
they are accompanied by the kanjo, and they actually put a padlock on your, on your business premise. Madam Speaker, this practice shows the desperation and the, 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 the problems of raising on source revenue in my county, Tana River County. Madam Speaker, the answer to these problems is to increase the base upon which we can raise on source revenue. And this act, the rating act that we are, we are bringing, that standardizes how we shall collect uh, uh, charges from properties across the entire 47 counties is going to be a great help to a county such as Tana River County. The reason I support this bill very much is because we don't need then to increase the taxes or the charges or the levies that is upon the businessman who is selling in his kiosk, who is selling in his bar, who is selling in his little supermarket. What Tana River County will now be doing, Madam Speaker, is to benefit from this act if we pass it into law, where the huge landmass is going to be rentable, And those huge investors who we welcome to our county will have a predictable rate at which they will be paying their levies every year when it is due for payment. Madam Speaker, we have huge irrigation schemes in Tana River County. Do they pay to the county government anything? No. Madam Speaker, we have huge programs that are, are, are coming, investors, private investors, Madam Speaker, who are supposed to be uh, bringing investment, yes, and we welcome them, but who are also supposed to make a contribution to the county government. Are they paying? No, Madam Speaker. Why? Because the legal framework does not exist. Today, when we pass this rating act, Madam Speaker, we shall create a larger base for the counties, not just Tana River, but the rest of the counties in this nation, who will be able now to collect in an organized manner, in a structured manner, they will be able to collect the levies that are due, and they will increase the base. Madam Speaker, we know that there is a very serious problem of leakage of what county government collect. And we know, Madam Speaker, that even the little that they are collecting, like what the Honorable Majority Leader has said, there is something called the T-junction. When they collect the resource for the, the, the charges from the, uh, the traders, instead of that money coming directly to their accounts, the county revenue fund, it is, there is a T-junction created there where illegal charges, the, the juice is supped in little, little amounts. So people then become very wealthy. You cannot explain how they are wealthy because they don't have a business, they don't have a factory, they are not trading, they are not even registered anywhere. And Madam Speaker, you see that they're, they're, they're having all this money to splash around. Why? Because they are stealing from the T-junction. So Madam Speaker, even as we discuss this rating bill, we must empower the, within the same act, and I think we should be creative enough to create a mechanism within that legal framework that will force this money that will be collected through ra rating to come directly into the county revenue fund. Madam Speaker, we have technology now in this time and age that we live in. We should not leave it to county revenue officers to be coming to properties of people or to go to those large investors in Tana River County or any other county to go and try and collect cash or to go with papers, writing papers, uh, and then they give one type of paper, they say this is the correct one, and then the fake one is the one they present. So the money that is paid is not the money that reaches the county revenue fund. And then you see, while when it was a county council, more money was being collected. Now it's a county government, less money is being collected. Madam Speaker, 
I believe that senators here will apply their minds so that we create a system when we are collecting the funds, the funds will go directly to the county revenue funds. We shall create a system using technology that will make sure that the money goes directly where it's supposed to be. In this way, Madam Speaker, the hope uh, in this law is to create a legal framework that will ensure counties like us, where we have huge pieces of land, where we have investors who are coming, some of them are government bodies, some are private bodies. They will be able now, in a very predictable manner, they know this is the amount, this is the law, and they don't need to talk to anyone. They pay electronically when it is due. They don't need favors from the governors. They don't need favors from the CEC finance or the county revenue uh, officers. They will just be dealing direct, Madam Speaker, with the county revenue fund, so that when the time comes, they know how to pay. Madam Speaker, this, this creation within this act, this framework, must have within it uh, the, the aspect of technology when it comes to collection. We should not just leave it uh, a bit hanging there. Otherwise, Madam Speaker, this law is a very good law for our counties. And from my perspective, where we come from, Madam Speaker, especially because we have massive land, little population, and then we have people who have come to invest in those lands, and they are not paying rates. Madam Speaker, this rating act will enable the county government to collect enough so that then the charges that they impose using the Finance Act on the local Monainchi in the small towns, they can be reduced to a very small contribution so that those big investors can benefit our county. Madam Speaker, my other point in, this, uh, in, in seconding this bill, Madam Speaker, when we are here uh, looking for ways and means to make our counties function effectively. We have saboteurs within the county government systems. Madam Speaker, whose sole purpose, they seek election. Some of them are appointed leaders whose sole purpose, Madam Speaker, is to milk the monies that come into their hands or through their hands. Madam Speaker, I am so disappointed because our own county, the county of Tana River, Madam Speaker, was listed in the, in the accounts ending uh, in the year ending June 2023 as one of the counties that have an, uh, a, a very adverse opinion from the Auditor General Nancy Gadungu. Madam Speaker, when you see a county uh, such as ours, committing 450 million to pay legal fees, Madam Speaker. And you know, the on source revenue is so little, but they are paying 450 million legal fees. There is no accountability in those fees, Madam Speaker. There is no documentation according to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the Auditor General. And Madam Speaker, people are just still walking around. Madam Speaker, when uh, the Auditor General says there's 22 million that was, that was paid for roads that when they went, they did not see. Therefore, there was loss of value for the money that we came, we, we was brought to Tana River County. Madam Speaker, contractors are still walking free. They are known. County government officers who participated in that crime, they are walking free, they are known, and nothing is happening to them. Madam Speaker, when you hear there is a hundred million that was unaccounted for in the year ending June 2023 for travel, local travel, and Madam Speaker, documentation is missing. Uh, people, justification for those travels are missing. Madam Speaker, even when we bring this rating act, this new mechanism for extending the on source revenue into our counties, what is it that we will put in this act, Madam Speaker, 
that will make sure those thieves, those pilferers, will not walk straight. Madam Speaker, there was once a, a, an ambassador here in Kenya from the U.S. who said they steal and they vomit on our shoes, Madam Speaker. It is, it is that kind of ugliness that we see in some of our counties. Documented, Madam Speaker. And the other day, Madam Speaker, the same government reports are saying 33 accounts are being operated in Tana River County and they cannot be explained. And then people are just walking, driving nice cars, having nice houses. Madam Speaker, we need as a Senate to start taking very serious actions against some of these officers in the counties. Even as we pass this, even as we make efforts to increase our rating, uh, uh, in this rating act, to increase our ability for the counties to collect, Madam Speaker, it will be a failure on our part if we don't also put mechanisms that are deterrent for those who will think that this is yet another opportunity, it's another revenue stream that we have created for them in the county for them to collect funds. So, Madam Speaker, I pray, even as I second this bill, that we put in a thought, not just in creating a, a technology system that will protect the funds, but also, Madam Speaker, create deterrent method, deterrent punishments that will make those people who are involved in criminal activity not to imagine that a Senate has passed for us another eating line. Madam Speaker, we should create in this law a very serious deterrent punishment for those who will find it uh, uh, another uh, opportunity to dip their hands on the county's funds. Madam Speaker, with all those many remarks, I beg to second this bill and I would pray that senators who are listening to me and those who will have opportunities to read this act, Madam Speaker, we shall bring necessary amendments to make it better. And those who have even better ideas will better this law. But we must make sure that we pass it as soon as possible. Madam Speaker, with those many remarks, I beg to second. I thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Honorable Senators, I propose the question that the National Rating Bill, National Assembly Bills Number 55 of 2022 be now read a second time. It's now time to engage in a debate on this bill. I invite Senator Mogeni Eric Okongo to commence. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me uh, an opportunity to also uh, make my input to this bill. Uh, first, Madam Speaker, I want to go on record as, in principle, uh, supporting this bill, and we need to give comfort to Kenyans that uh, we are not introducing new taxation measures. We are just putting in place a mechanism to ensure that there is equity and fairness. In, in collection of land rates from Kenyans. Madam Speaker, I also want to join my two colleagues who this afternoon have uh, kind of written the Book of Lamentations because of the corruption, the wastage, the stealing of public money that is happening in our counties. And uh, Madam Speaker, I'm no exemption, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, as uh, Senator Mgatana has put it, unless we are putting in place mechanisms to ensure that this money that will be collected will not form another stream for governors to steal, governors will start celebrating as soon as this money hits their uh, accounts. Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, I am uh, I'm speaking here with uh, <laughs> having the honors of coming from the account that has been rated by Ethics and, and Corruption Commission as the one that is leading in corruption in the country. 
so shameful, Madam Speaker, a county that has produced distinguished Kenyans, including the retired Chief Justice of the Republic, the control of budget comes from Nyamira, but we have that distinction of being rated as a leading county in corruption. So unless, Madam Speaker, we put in place mechanisms uh, that will ensure that this money is used for the benefit of the locals. Senator Chiriot, uh, this will just be another way of creating an efficient way of making his money available for governors. I will pray that the committee that will uh, retreat to go, f go further into the details will look at mechanisms of ensuring that uh, this money once collected from hard-working uh, Kenyans it, it comes back to benefit them. Just the other day, Madam Speaker, the county government of Nyamira increased uh, the daily uh, rates for Mamamboga from 30 shillings to 50 shillings. Uh, Boda Boda, there was a task the other day to increase the Boda Boda rates per day from 10 shillings to 20. And these are Kenyans who are hustling, who make uh, almost $2 a day to fend for their families. And then you find, Madam Speaker, that uh, somebody has the, the audacity, the courage to again steal from uh, such class of, of, of Kenyans. In fact, Madam Speaker, just to join uh, what Senator Jeriot was saying, you collect money, but you don't provide even basic uh, services. In uh, our second largest uh, town in Yamira, Keroka, we have been without toilets in our market for the last two years. Madam Speaker, a tender that was given four years ago uh, to build toilets has, has not been uh, completed to date. We also have the distinction as being among the six counties uh, whose, whose uh, audited accounts have moved from being qualified to adverse. And, and you know some of the factors contributing is just impunity, Madam Speaker. Some of the queries uh, the Auditor General is raising is that there's a circular from SRC that uh, has given a guideline that a governor should not drive, uh, should not buy an official car that is more than 3,000 cc. But my governor has defied the Auditor General for the last two financial years and has continued to drive a V8 of 4,600 cc. You know, just sheer impunity, it's like saying utadu, you know. Now we have moved to a level where the auditor is saying we'll mark this as a county that uh, needs to move from qualified to adverse, Madam Speaker. On bursaries, money that is supposed to assist needy children, orphans, Madam Speaker. The auditor is saying you can't withdraw money and then purport to say you are moving around schools giving 3,000 shillings. Instead of transferring that money direct to schools. In some instances, Madam Speaker, we had a sitting last week with the, the committee chaired by Senator Ososi, Madam Speaker, and money is sent to a school, but no names are sent. One Mze uh, was even crying, saying, "My name, the name of my child appears as having benefited, but that child never benefited. Those are the kind of uh, criminal acts that we are having at our counties. And you know the tragedy is this. ESCC can issue a report telling us Nyamira is the leading county in corruption. But there is not even a single case of anybody from the county government of Nyamira who is facing corruption charges in any court of law. There has not been any seizure of assets. If this money was stolen to buy properties in Karen, people are putting up marshonets with lifts in their houses, and no action has been taken, yes. Madam Speaker. And you know ESCC is chaired by my good friend, Bishop Oginde, a man I hold in high esteem, a man I really respect, Madam Speaker. How are you going to build confidence in our governance, Madam Speaker? if you rate a county as being the leading in corruption, and yet you are taking no action to apprehend 
the suspects, all those who are engaged in corruption, Madam Speaker. And these are the people we are saying this afternoon that we are going to pass the national rating bill and place this money under their control. I can see there is a good effort in this bill to ensure that we discourage manual collection of these rates. We are saying take the money to the bank, pay the money electronically. But there is another clause there that says a CEC can gazette another method of collection. Madam Speaker, and that's where you will create those T junctions we are talking about, Madam Speaker. Really, 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 this afternoon, I want to speak and appeal to my president. Madam Speaker, unless we tackle corruption at our counties, unless we make corruption extremely painful at, our, at, at the county level, Madam Speaker, our people will continue suffering. Before the Committee of Ossosi, Madam Speaker, was a, a, a situation where 110 million shillings was sent to the county government of Nyamira to build 300 bed capacity, emergency COVID response hospital. We were horrified when the governor appeared and said, we decided to divert this money for other purposes, which is contrary to the Public Finance Management Act, Madam Speaker. We were horrified that uh, mortgages in, in, in Yamira, Madam Speaker, a cabinet sits and it decides to dish money. There is no security at all, that, Madam Speaker. There is no format of how you recover this money, Madam Speaker. And this is public money, which is just shared. It's like a cabinet sits and says, today we are giving a governor 20 million. After three weeks, he comes and he says, I want a top up. And you are given minutes, say we have given governor a top up of three million. We should not allow this, Madam Speaker. We really, as senators, we must retreat and find a way of dealing with the corruption we are seeing in our counties. And we cannot place our trust in MCAs, Madam Speaker. When we ask the the, 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 the Public Accounts Committee of Nyamira, whether they have ever done any report on how money is spent in Nyamira, they say they have never. They have never tabled any report, Madam Speaker. So all these things, they were just seeing them when they appeared before the associate-led committee in the Senate. So there's a big, big gap on how we can protect uh, the public uh, resources. <laughs> The bill is very good. Uh, I like the approach on public participation, Madam Speaker, that for once we are recognizing that the people who reside in, in counties may not be uh, people who are fluent in either English or Kiswahili, and we are saying there will be serious campaigns in our local FM stations. There will be uh, radio shows just to ensure that before you make a decision on what you will be charging uh, people uh, who own properties in our urban centers, they have an input. That's very progressive. But the elephant in the room, Madam Speaker, is how to protect these uh, resources. I also must commend the drafters of this bill, because initially I was worried that we may be entering that territory where we want to tax uh, farmers, uh, I mean like our tea farmers, uh, people who own free old land, but I'm, I'm happy that uh, this bill has a clause that specifically excludes any rating from uh, farmers who have uh, free old land. That uh, majority leader is very commendable. We don't want to overburden uh, Mukulima. The farmer is already uh, suffering the returns from agricultural produce are not very competitive. So this is good. Uh, this, is a, this is really a good statement of comfort for, to our farmers that the people we are targeting are people who are engaged in businesses. People are making some income who are benefiting from services that are being offered by counties, uh, uh, but who should in return uh, pay these rates so that they can be used to improve the services that they get from our counties. In terms of uh, the tribunal, uh, Mr. Madam Speaker, I have no problem with the Judicial Service Commission 
recruiting the members of this tribunal. But I'm worried that the number we have put at uh, 18 is really, that's a big number. I've not seen a tribunal, Madam Speaker, that has a membership of 18. I, I think we should uh, consider reducing the number of uh, the members of, the, of this tribunal and also ask some key professional bodies to send the nominees. You know, bodies like Law Society of Kenya, uh, bodies like uh, uh, ISPAC, they can be given slots, Madam Speaker, where they pick uh, their representatives who sit uh, in those, uh, in that tribunal. As I get towards conclusion, Madam Speaker, I don't know whether there is wisdom in having Kenya Revenue Authority as a, collect, a collecting agency for our counties, Madam Speaker. Just uh, two years ago, Gladys Wanga took the mantle of leadership in Oma Bay. Uh, Oma Bay was collecting less than 300,000 uh, shillings in revenue. But uh, this financial year, Madam Speaker, Gladys Wanga has demonstrated that with good leadership, own source revenue can grow and make a big meaning in the economy of our county. Their collection, as we speak today, Madam Speaker, is at 700 plus million shillings, just within two years, Madam Speaker. And you can see what leadership means to our people. In Yamira, we are still collecting the same money that we used to collect five years ago, before we lost our uh, inaugural governor, Governor Nyagarama, Madam Speaker. What that tells you, Madam Speaker, is that uh, the T-junction uh, that uh, Senator Cheriota and Senator Mgatana <laughs> spoke about works very well in Yamira. It means almost 60% of the rates that we collect from those poor business people, those poor mamambogas, those poor border borders, goes to the pockets of some leaders from Yamira County, Madam Speaker. And those are the people, Madam Speaker, you had, are busy putting up massive buildings in the city of Nairobi. Not even in our county, in the city of Nairobi. Those are people, Madam Speaker, you will not trace them to any businesses. They are not professionals in any field, but their profession is to steal from poor Kenyans. The appeal I make this afternoon, as I conclude, is that it pains me, Madam Speaker, when I see our MCS not appreciating that they should not be the ones who are uh, encouraging our governors to steal from the poor people that we represent, Madam Speaker. How I pray, Madam Speaker, that we can find a way, we can find a way that uh, can, 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 can make Ethics and, and Corruption Commission to wake up, do something that will deter future governors from stealing. Because criminal law is about deterrence. Unless you take action, unless people go to court, they are tried and jailed, those criminal acts will continue being repeated. So I appeal to Bishop Oginde, who is heading ESCC, to focus on these counties that have been named as, the, that as, as being most corrupt. And do something. Because as senators, we can speak here. We can summon governors. We can make recommendations. But unless EACC takes action, we'll be lamenting day after day, Madam Speaker. With those remarks, Madam Speaker, I support. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. I hope PSCC is watching the proceedings with the specific reference to the T-junction, the concept by majority leader and uh, the senators who contributed. Uh, let's have Senator Oruba Magoma, Gloria. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would like to go on record to support this bill by majority leader on the national rating. Madam Speaker, 
I think I have uh, spoken before about the own source revenue issue. We have several counties that uh, are receiving a lot of funds and are unable to account for the funds, but in the same spirit are actually not producing much in terms of own source revenue. As a matter of fact, the statistics are very damning. I'm glad that uh, Senator Mungatana acknowledges that uh, Tana River is one of the counties that receives a lot of funds, even in terms of uh, the supplementary budget, marginalized funds, yet they are unable for many years now to account for what these funds are doing in terms of development and in terms of bringing a return on investment. Madam Speaker, in that sense then, when I saw this, um, when I went through this uh, bill on the national rating in terms of how to streamline and give a legal framework on uh, revenue collection on levies and properties uh, in counties, I was very happy. Because, Madam Speaker, we have seen over the news and over the years, many counties and many people, all these whistleblowers who are out there saying that the, there's a lot of corruption. The corruption is actually now geared and targeted at the own source revenue, which comes from land rates, which comes from all these fees. If you look at Nairobi County, for instance, and uh, excuse me for using this uh, uh, example, Nairobi County is one of the counties that uh, brings in a large amount of own source revenue. But if you question how that revenue is being used and to what extreme uh, measures are being taken to ensure that certain rates, some of them that are completely uh, crazy in terms of even uh, the prices that are put out, you know, you, uh, you'll be unable to get any answers for the questions that you ask. So, Madam Speaker, this uh, national rating bill, the idea of establishing a tribunal to be able to um, even have an oversight of what is happening on county level and streamline, streamlining that space, Madam Speaker, I think it's about time. And uh, I wanted to also, I, I wish uh, Majority Leader was here because I wanted to, to request that they should even go further, that above and beyond... Um, ensuring that this uh, uh, tribunal is used to, to settle the disputes on uh, issues on levies and payments of the properties. Um, we should also look at how are we channeling this uh, own source revenue that is coming specifically from the property, from the land rates. Because sometimes you go to counties where you don't have even the infrastructure. Look at Nairobi, for instance. When it rains, we are all swimming. Madam Speaker, literally, practically we are swimming on the road. So you ask yourself, being one of the counties that is collecting a lot of uh, money from property uh, rates, from levies, why isn't that money channeled into ensuring that our infrastructure, even just the drainages on our roads, are maintained? So Madam Speaker, one of the, the, the proposals that I have is that above and beyond uh, giving a framework, a legal framework of how we are going to deal with the imposition of property taxes, there should be an element of at least to some extent dictating on how that money is spent. Because it doesn't make any sense that a county uh, as big as Nairobi is earning so much on property taxes, but when we have basic weather changes, it is those same properties that are being hit the highest. So you have, you're collecting so much from the markets. You know, I was so surprised if you go to Dagoreti North that the markets have been taken over by cartels there. And the rates that are being imposed in Dagoreti North in the markets there in Kawangware are crazy. But when it rains, those same markets are the same ones that are hit by floods. They are the same ones whose sewer is blocked. They're the same ones who actually closed shop because Jana, uh, yesterday it rained. So there has to be some level of responsibility, and I think that we can legislate this by saying that a percentage of the money that is collected from these uh, property taxes should actually be pumped back into the same infrastructure in the sense that then even the people who are paying, get they, 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 have, they are motivated to, to, to pay these levies and these taxes. Madam Speaker, 
I think in terms of, uh, and I don't know how to hammer this enough because I've said this before, I am always reading the statistics and, and, and trying to highlight that we need to get to a point as a country and probably when we say this over and over, that we have to live within our means. Our means means that we are literally, if we are earning from property taxes, this, this own source revenue uh, income that is coming from various taxes, including the property taxes that we are now trying to, to streamline, Madam Speaker. We also have to demand, as a Senate, that the counties that are reporting the lowest income on source revenue should be able to tell us that after 20 years, or after I don't know how many years of devolution, why isn't it that you cannot channel these supplementary funds that we're giving you, these marginalized funds that we're giving you into infrastructural projects or something that is able to now pump back money into the own source revenue. I say this because you have counties such as Wajir, Tana River, Mandera, West Pokot, and Marsabit, who receive the highest um, um, uh, funds in terms of uh, um, allocation, and yet, they are actually bringing in the lowest in terms of own source revenue. And no one wants to address that. But it really comes down to, is it that there are no businesses there? Is it that there are no buildings? Is it that there is no uh, form of uh, economic activity? Because as much as we are, we are trying to streamline the, the property taxes, we also have to ask ourselves, is it that in Tana River, where the own source revenue is only coming to 15, 59 million, which is like uh, a drop in the ocean, is it that they don't have any economic activities there after all these years of pumping in money for infrastructure, after all these years of getting supplementary budgets, after all the oversight? What is the problem? Because we could be, we could be legislating here and, and, and trying to uh, uh, impose this new law for property taxes, but it, it might not even be able to affect some of these counties because I don't understand. Don't they have properties there that... that that they are trying to, you know, have an economic activity. So we will keep running away from the issue of own source revenue versus um, uh, monies that are being given from um, the national uh, um, uh, budget. But at one point, whether we legislate uh, property taxes, whether we legislate uh, all these issues, whether we even deal with corruption, if we cannot understand why certain counties are unable to move from where they were 15 years back and years after devolution, years after, you know, sending a... Uh, uh, um, What's your... Uh, Senator Gloria, would you wish to be informed by Senator Danson? Madam Speaker, I'm in a very good mood, so I will allow for Senator Mungatana oh, to inform me. Yes, uh, on Madam mood. Speaker, I, I actually, I, I admire the revitalized uh, Senator Gloria and her contributions on this floor since we began. I, I just wanted to, to inform her that indeed the economic activities in places like Tana River are dominated by investors in those large parcels of land. Those are the major, but these little investment in the chambers and uh, the, the houses, the county government hardly collects anything. So why we are saying this rating bill is very good is that if we can streamline the collections from all those big investors, from all those massive irrigation, whatever, and it comes to the county government, then even what they are charging the bar owners, the market owners, you know, it will come down. That is the information I wanted to give uh, my colleague, that indeed the level of economic activity is little. We don't have factories, we don't have industries, but they are huge, uh, you know, investors. But we are collecting nothing from them. They just use the land, make the money, maybe pay government taxes and get nothing for them. So the own source revenue is very little. But if this the national rating bill is supported by the Senate and it's passed, our hope uh, is that it will increase the base and we will then benefit from those huge areas that we are covering. Of course, she makes a good point about the pilferages. Uh, we have bad 
mismanagement, and there's no excuse for that. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, Senator. Senator Glory, you can resume. Thank you, Senator Mungatana, for that piece of information. It's actually good to know because I've been wondering, I've been looking at the figures of, uh, of uh, Tana River and it just never made sense. And, and, and that is why I'm also saying um, I support this bill, especially the establishment of the National Rating Tribunal. Because in a situation like now Tana River, this tribunal should be able... If at all, this bill passes and it has to come with regulations. This tribunal then should be able to say, in certain specific areas, these are some of the measures we are going to put in. Because we understand that Tana River, for instance, heavily relies on property taxes as an on-source revenue. So how do we... Uh, uh, custom, how do we customize our regulations to Tana River to the benefit of the people of Tana River? So, and in essence, then what I'm saying is that for Tana River particularly, if that is what you're saying, then you would not, uh, um, that tribunal would not be able to say that Tana River uh, property taxes are the same as the, the property taxes in, um, in, uh, in Nairobi, for instance. So, um, my point here is. What this bill will do, and I believe, it is, first of all, it is a conversation starter in terms of we just pay taxes, but what is the expectation for those taxes to do, to, you know, what is the return on investment on, that, on those taxes? In that same spirit, if a county government, and this is where uh, I would propose my amendments, if a county government is actually collecting such high property taxes with whatever um, justifications, uh, particularly, for instance, in uh, cities like Nairobi, then you also have to be able to justify your expenditure with relevance to the, 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 the same properties that are earning you your, your own source revenue. So, um, Madam Speaker, and I, and, and, and I keep uh, leaning back to Nairobi because Nairobi County is one of the counties that I believe and I don't want to sound political, but I believe the potential of Nairobi County is not being exploited. What is happening is because there is a baseline of this is the expected uh, revenue that Nairobi County gives anyway since time immemorial, since devolution. First of all, there has not been any need to interrogate how those uh, um, how that revenue is coming in and if an audit was to be done in Nairobi County on how the on source revenue is being uh, generated from Nairobi County we will come back to the conversation on property taxes we'll come back to the conversation on the levies that are put on on, on uh, commercial properties on land and things like that so and in the end the biggest people who are hit by the calamities that sometimes we face in Nairobi County are the same uh, owners of this property. So there has to be some uh, idea of how we can legislate around a percentage of those property taxes being pumped back in to the infrastructure of those uh, uh, localities and the properties around there. So Madam Speaker, I support uh, this bill. Um, I, I am very categorical and I think people who have had conversations with me, I'm very categorical on pushing the conversation of on source revenue against relying on uh, the national budget, against relying on what we call the supplementary budgets, the marginalized funds, and things like that. And I think it is high time for the counties at the bottom of the list of the on source revenue. That is Wajir, Tana River, Mandera, West Pokot, and Masabit. I think it's high time that we started asking the very difficult questions of why are you still not able to raise your economic activities. What is not happening? Devolution has been here. We have channeled uh, funds down to the uh, county, to the grassroots. We have added supplementary budgets, marginalized funds. You know, a county like Marsabit is receiving a lot of that money. And still, we'll still talk about low income on the own source revenue. Why? So where is the money going? And what is happening? So, Madam Speaker, as I support this bill, um, I would like to say, and maybe to echo the sentiments of uh, uh, Senator Omogeni, that uh, corruption is one thing that we must deal with. Because whether we legislate the property taxes and we, we deal with the issue of the T-junctions, if we are not going to talk about what we are going to do with this issue of governors who have decided to just loot um, 
the 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 the, the coffers of the county government, then we will we will not be improving the lives of Kenyans in the grassroots. So, I with those few remarks, I beg to support the bill. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Gloria. I'll give Senator Kathy Catherine Muma to contribute. Oh, thank you, Madam. Senator Madame. Catherine, are you going to exhaust your 15 minutes? Um, I know I'm supposed to relieve you. I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll be very quick. I'll be very quick. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, thank you for this opportunity to contribute to this uh, um, uh, bill, the National Ratings Bill. Uh, first, I'd like to commend the drafters of the bill. For the first time, I'm seeing a bill that is attempting to at least align uh, uh, with the devolved governance. So this is one of the bills that I hope we can uh, 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 um, learn from in terms of uh, speaking to a function that belongs to a county and trying to address an issue that affects those counties without taking away that uh, uh, a role. Uh, Madam Speaker, this bill is actually providing how we can have that intergovernmental uh, cooperation around an issue. And you can see clearly it is about how the counties can collect the rates and it has gone to extensive uh, uh, length to try and provide on how counties uh, can um, uh, uh, levy the rates on land and property and how to go about this. Madam Speaker, one of the things that is hoped to be strengthened is the systems for county governments in terms of the rates collection systems. And uh, whereas there are those who think this is going to streamline it, uh, I'm hoping Madam Speaker, that as we do the regulations, we can find that formula that will keep rates collections to the counties, but ensure that there is transparency and accountability. And the digital system that is supposed to be put in place, I hope can be done in a manner that will ensure that transparency and accountability uh, is achieved. Uh, as the law currently is, is, it generally speaks about the uh, 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 electronic uh, payments, but I would hope to find that uh, in practice we can find a way in which we can find a formula that can ensure the transparency and accountability. Madam Speaker, nearly every county has digitalized collection of own resources but we have counties that actually have pilferage. So let us also uh, know that even with digitalized systems, there is pilferage. So we need to, uh, in this country, in the country, both at national and county level, we need to find financial systems that can help to ensure transparency and accountability of public funds. Madam Speaker, I will then move on to a few things that I think the movers of the bill need to look at, and they are crucial for me. Madam Speaker, the definition of chief government valuer does not properly align with the roles that they have been, uh, been given. Here, it simply talks about the chief uh, uh, government valuer means the advisor to national and county governments. But when you go and find the role, the role is hardly around advice. So I would suggest that the drafters neaten that so that uh, what the chief advisor is supposed to do is aligned with what is in the text. And the definition uh, uh, captures this accurately. Madam Speaker, I'm also wondering the tasks given to the chief advisor, to the chief, uh, sorry, government valuer, uh, is such that it seems to be an institution, but there is no space in the law that has actually put that institution. So he will be the one to keep 
or she will be the one to keep the roles, the rating roles. Have they put any infrastructure to support that office to do the functions they've given? Madam Speaker, I have not seen it done in this law. It is something they need to look at. When come to clause three of the bill, actually clause four, clause four of the bill talks about uh, uh, guiding principles. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, clause four. It says clause four one two talks about uh, says without prejudice to the generality of subsection one, a county government shall and um, then a ensure all of this. When comes to C, it says take cognizance of the needs of the county. Madam Speaker, I would hope that they can recognize that revenues of counties include equitable share from the national revenue. So this clause needs to recognize this and say it needs, uh, uh, the, the, it shall take cognizance of the needs of the county government beyond what can be met by the equitable share from the national revenue. Because the constitution requires that monies that will be delivering services are also from the national, uh, the equitable share from national revenue plus on source. But if we are requiring counties to think all the needs of the counties, then we are in a subtle way saying that now on source revenue is the one to actually carry out all of this. We will be contradicting the constitution. So for clarity and the avoidance of a doubt, I suggest that those words be included in this. In the same clause, when you read subsection 2E, it says determine the criteria to be applied that property ratings is fair, objective, reasonable, and just by one, applying different forms of rating, different categories of ratable properties. When you come to four, it says by increasing rates, taxes, basis. Madam Speaker, that means we are giving the uh, permission to counties to only increase rates. Madam Speaker, we must contemplate decreasing of rates. So I suggest the removal of this clause because it is just about increasing rates and taxes, tax basis for the counties. And I suggest we must not bring this uh, sickness of taxation to be again entrenched in law at the county level. Madam Speaker, as I finalize, I also want to bring the Senate's attention to Clause 27. Clause 27 says all areas within a county government shall be a ratable area for purposes of this act. Madam Speaker, that means the widow in the far-flung rural areas with a broken house who can hardly find money to pay her, to buy her food, is now being told she'll start paying rates. Currently, rates are payable in respect of urban areas and municipalities. And as areas, we start getting areas urbanizing or urban uh, areas start growing up and becoming municipalities and urban areas. It is good to put rates there. But Madam Speaker, the bulk parts of the rural areas in this country are completely neglected. For, you, for us to say, to start now, uh, leaving this rate against people in the rural areas is objectionable. And I suggest that this clause 27 be removed. Otherwise, every Kenyan in every space prepared to pay taxes, rates. And I would urge the county governments not to be driven into this trick of uh, uh, fighting with Kenyans over unnecessary uh, uh, taxes. Let us pay rates in respect of urban and peri-urban coming areas, but let us stop this uh, appetite for getting money even where there is no money. So I suggest clause 27 be removed from this act. 
Madam Speaker, I will not speak to the other issues. I have a few others which I'll uh, share with Majority Leader. Uh, but uh, um, I know I have crossed, I need to come and relieve you. But on that clause 27, I urge that it be expunged from this bill. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, Senator Catherine. Senator Chirabi, please answer. Uh, Mr. S Madam Speaker, sorry. Uh, I want to, from the onset, to support this bill of uh, National Assembly Bills Number 55 of 2022, the National Rating uh, Bill 2022. Um, Madam, S Madam Speaker, I know there is a lot of growth in the country, especially in terms of development and valuation and uh, acquisition of properties, valuation of properties, even in waivers, and many others, uh, Madam Speaker. You know, in most cases, there is always uh, the issue or the aspect where we do valuation role. As the Vice Chair of County Public Accounts Committee of the Senate, we normally request, uh, Madam Speaker, on the valuation role, because it informs the basis of own source revenue, it involves the basis of uh, valuation and in terms of uh, assets uh, and liabilities register, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, therefore, it is important in anything that will uh, ensure a framework, because we normally see county governments putting banners, using a lot of money to advertise in radio and media, saying we are doing waivers of land rates, of land fees, and many other charges that they implement. It is important to have a discipline and order in the legal framework. Uh, Madam Speaker, and the last week I was privileged. Uh, you know, every sector must have an order and discipline. Last week, for example, I was meeting my sugarcane farmers. You know, there is a sugar bill that is under consideration at the moment. And uh, in as much, there must be an order in every sector so that uh, we don't just wake up one day. You know, you can say you want to do waivers. Kumbe, uh, sorry, your intention is is to, to waive on behalf of your friends or specific interests. So there must be a threshold or certain threshold. And, uh, uh, and therefore, Madam Speaker, the short recess, we have interacted and there are many land rates and, and, and land that have not been paid. Even by, and the biggest defaulter is his government. You know, most of the time, even in this Nairobi, if Senator Governor Sakaja will tell you, Madam Speaker, most of the defaulting and most of the pending bills is government agencies. That's the sad reality that being owed billions and billions of shillings. And, and it hampers the own source revenue. Uh, Madam Speaker, from where I come in, in Nandi County, for example, own source revenue is a sad story. We don't want to open it because it looks more like a, a eulogy of some sort of offense of a total misnomer in terms of collection of own source revenue, Madam Speaker. Because um, as much as many people see in Nandi, uh, because we have tea, and like Makweni, we have says from sugarcane. For example, says forms one of the bases. And we were with farmers at Aldai Maraba of Chemelil Chemasa Ward at a place called uh, near Kisumu. That's 17 kilometers near Miwani, a place called Kipkorok, uh, and a place called Samoget, and a place called at Maraba, uh, uh, Maraba Primary School grounds. And one of the issues was what is the state of census? Says. Uh, that is being collected from sugar again from tea farmers. And you know, it affects the own source revenue of individual counties. I had uh, the Senator of Nyamira highlighting a, a county that in terms of change of leadership, it has seen significance where Senator Beatrice Okola comes from. It's about leadership. But my place is that you take says the roads are not passable in that uh, Kemaloi Maraba. You go also, I uh, was with the farmers of sugar again at Chepterwai. Uh, in uh, Masab sub county, and their complaint is about, says uh, Madam Speaker. So it's this issue of rating and waivers forms part of all source revenue. And the sugarcane farmers, because we come from the same region, for example, in Northern Nandi, they wanted to be part, as Pao Paranya recommendation of sugar, to be part of Kakamega, the Northern Nandi, and part of Bungoma and Transoia. On the southern part of Nandi, they want to be part of central region of uh, Nandi. Uh, Kericho and uh, Kisumu, because you realize that, uh, uh, interestingly, Madam Speaker, 
uh, because we are discussing about how to generate own source revenue, uh, not only in rating. Uh, it is, we are 18 kilometers to the next factory in South Nandi. And, and you are also 18 kilometers to another factory in Kakamega County, for example, it's Butali or Cabras. When you come to this either side, is it Kibos, uh, is it uh, Moroni and Miwani, and also Chemeli. So, Madam Speaker, they were arguing apart from that issue, and, and the Agriculture Committee will resolve that as a house. I want to assure farmers because our interest is to protect the interest of farmers. Is the issue of sales. They want to see value when they pay sugarcane sales, when they pay tea sales. And we are lucky as Nandi County because we have sales. You go to Makweni, I don't know whether mung beans pay sales, for example. I, I don't know whether mung beans pay sales. I don't know whether fish. Pay says, but I highly doubt, Madam Speaker, you and me, because you come from that region, they says that comes from you. But we must see the value in terms of maintenance of roads. In this valuation and the powers of valuers, and we have a number we need to ensure we organize because these valuers are very important, but we don't want them to inflate the issue of valuation so that it becomes easy, Madam Speaker. And uh, on the issue of uh, uh, discount, I think when they do waivers, these governors, they must be specific how many discounts are they giving out. Because when you buy something, you are given 10% discount. But some of these waivers, they do it, uh, they, they, they do it 100%, but when also they give out discount, they give out 50%. So how will you enhance and generate uh, all source revenue, Madam Speaker? So I will just say three things in quick succession so that we can allow colleagues uh, to ensure that uh, we finish on this bill and moving forward. Like uh, the county may levy rates on land and building in accordance with the provision of this act. With this has been provided under article, uh, uh, under the provision of the constitution, empowered to, to, to do taxation by county governments. And I think it is, there is nothing new here because levy rates on land or buildings, but they should not also become unpredictable because it will affect the ease of doing business. Because if you are paying land rate, for example, a thousand shillings maybe per acre, then you allow counties are free and they might amend in the next financial year because of the appetite of raising on source revenue, they might decide to do 10,000. So you are chasing investors. In fact, Mr. Madam Speaker, sorry, you at least you are more exposed than a number of us. You know, in some countries, the rich don't pay tax. And if I know that, I know many people are uncomfortable. The reason they don't pay tax is to give them to do investment. When they do investment, they hire more people. Then you go for your VAT or payee, sorry, for your money. And that's how you recoup in terms of, I know for people like uh, senior counsel, Daniel Manzo, might not agree with me, but when you travel, when you, the serious established economies, the rich don't pay tax. Because they are being encouraged, being given incentives to invest more. Because if you allow a factory to be established, for example, in Chemelil Chemase, if in my county Nandi, and you are doing around a billion, it, it can hire up to 2,000 engineers, laborers, loaders. So the value that will come will be much more valuable than the tax that you are paying, uh, Madam Sika. So I think we need to look at clause number seven, and I know the leader of majority is following and listening. Uh, any form, and uh, we should not allow counties to do more because we have seen how they are doing finance act, a uh, uh, finance act that uh, is not, uh, Madam Speaker, on the notice of red, uh, under the act shall be due financial fee, which is levy, I think it is financial act and finance bill that is in the counties. I know at the moment, Madam Speaker, we are trying to enhance accountability. There is a proposal to reduce the time period of doing financial statements by county governments and other entities to be within one month, as opposed to three months as provided by uh, financial uh, by public finance management act and even amending in terms of audit public uh, standards and uh, 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 standards and uh, uh, audit board to be changed so that it becomes would move from accrual or cash to accrual basis in terms of uh, running audit madam, madam speaker on the issue of payment of rates i think we need to be careful on this one madam speaker having sat some time now as a county public uh, accounts member we need to be careful in terms of payment because counties take advantage. Can you believe one county had almost 100 commercial bank accounts? And some of them even were putting money that is given through World Bank or conditional grants, Madam Speaker. And you know the law is very clear that under PMF Act, you must create a special purpose account. But you find counties are opening 
70, 17, others are opening 20 commercial bank accounts without following the Public Finance and Management Act. And that is prone because, in fact, Nandi, for example, in the last financial year, we received money from Kenya Up and Support Program. Let me use Nandi because it's by county. We had a, and we received millions and millions of shillings. The CCM Finance, in consultation with the governor, decided to open a fixed account so that they can get interest, violating the opening of special purpose account. So when you tell counties to, open, to, to be, we need to agree on how they pay payment of rates, if we, and this issue of uh, pay bill is another elephant in the room. The automation of revenue system, the issue of M-Pesa, the issue of issuing M-Pesa, we must be very careful. And also in terms of paying cash, I remember a county used to collect uh, and, and I think we, I'm trying to recall the county in which financial year, Madam Speaker, they used to collect some amount, but every time between the county office and the national bank is less than 100 meters, but they used to lose 96,000 every day that used to leak because they were going to bank the cash, Madam Speaker. So we must be careful, and I agree with you largely, because we don't need to introduce other taxes and levies in terms of our process, Madam Speaker. So we must agree on how we need to pay, but we must agree designated revenue receiver of a county to transmit to the county treasury. It is important so that this process is not abuse, uh, Madam Speaker. And also we should find a way if you pay more or you pay less, what are the remissions, what are the remedies that needs to be plotted. The, 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 the second final point is on discount, I think it needs to be fair, it must be vetted, it must be agree, and due diligence. We, we know we, discounts are only given based on assessment. You don't just wake up one day and ensure, and just, uh, just give people without history, looking at the history, the credit, worth, the performance of business, because it doesn't make sense, Madam Speaker, to give out just for the purposes of giving out, uh, Madam Speaker. I had uh, one of my colleagues talking about uh, this as a corruption and the issue of waivers. Sometimes you find people are given waivers because they want to sell a property and they have agreed with county officials on how they are going to do that, uh, Madam Speaker. The issue of valuation, I agree uh, largely, Madam Speaker, uh, and, and many others, so that I allow my colleagues, let me say this in conclusion, so that I allow my colleagues to contribute also. That as a country, I agree that the issue of valuation, this is an important bill. But we, we are now bringing order and sanity in terms of valuation and the rating, uh, this that we have, Madam, uh, Madam Speaker. But we must agree as a country, and I remember my colleague, Senator Commissioner, say something about corruption. You know, I normally see ESCC, and many people have accused me that I don't like ESCC. It's not that I don't like it, it's I like saying the truth. Is ESCC says there is corruption in counties. I have seen them doing a wage bill conference. I am surprised, Madam Speaker. Your office, you as, you as the Speaker was never invited. Parliament is never part of the conversation. Yet we are the ones who made regulations that wage bill should not go beyond 35% as per the PMF Act. Yet I have not seen the input of Parliament. Yet we are the ones drafting the necessary legislation and, and, and legislative intervention in terms of wage bill. We have a crisis in counties. Even when you go to Makweni, we have different crises in terms of wage bill, even uh, when you go to Oma Bay, Madam Speaker. You have the staff that came with the Fangtan municipalities, including what we call rat catchers. Are you aware, Madam Speaker, some of the counties have what we call rat catchers? They are working in the previous defense, and you cannot fire them. Senator Manso will tell you, you fire them, they are permanent and pensionable, the Labor Court will return them, Madam Speaker. And they are rat catchers, their business is to just catch rats. And they are earning salary, Madam Speaker. So it's very unfortunate. You go to Garissa, for example. Garissa are paying 11 retired employees salary up to now, losing millions and millions of shillings. You go to Kisi, we got an a, a old man who is beyond 60 years. He's still earning a salary. Yet the circular from the National Treasury and from the public services, if you are beyond 60, Unless you are a judge or you have an exception or you are a person living with disability, you are given an exception. So as we even have the wage bill conference that we are discussing, I would have expected parliament to give their experience so that we can see how we can cut. I am aware, Madam Speaker, that national government is spending whooping 1.1 trillion in terms of wages, Madam Speaker, in this country. And therefore, 
even as they do that conference. I don't know where they will take resolutions. Because I thought parliament should be there so that we can transit those resolutions to policy and legislative intervention. And if we need be, how do we assist counties? There are defunct and municipal council employees. Now there are employees employed by government, governors, sorry. And then now when somebody wins an office, they always come with their, with their brigade. I'm told in the former Bungoma, when a governor was there, and you know, Senator Ogola used to be work with county, there was a time a former governor hired people to, to only carry his chair around and public toilet when I speak. And they are being paid. So we should be sitting as parliament and senate at the wage conference, wage bill conference, and telling the policymakers and governors to stop such, such misuse and abuse of resources, madam. And that is why you have seen, Madam Zika, I saw you are senator, and uh, I want to congratulate you. I didn't know you were that courageous when you joined yours truly to condemn the harassment of Senator Okio Mtata, Madam Speaker. That's why when you go to functions, governors have a lot of money that they, ha they have personal militia. You want to question something, you hear heckling, you hear harassment. It's because there is no proper guidance in terms of wage bill. And when you ask those people, they are, they, in fact, the governors nowadays are private militia to harass anybody who opposes them. They have hired radio callers to call in the morning in our local dialect stations and insult them. Others are, are what we call online army for the governors to insult people on social media. You know, and, and, and they are being paid. These are the ghost workers. Almost all counties, in fact, Nandi is leading in terms of ghost workers. And there's out of four billion in Nandi, more than one billion is paid to ghost workers. Just their work is to insult somebody who contravenes or questions the governor. It is good some of us have matured and we have PhD in handling such. But I, I empathize and sympathize with the people who are elected. But I'm happy that people like Senator Manso might be enjoying because they have commandeering uh, with, the, with the, my former colleague and my former member of jail, like Governor uh, Mutula. But when you go to your, like your county, I was shocked. Somebody was still stalking and questioning something which is valid. He was questioning about a road. Somebody stood up and go and took a microphone and wanted to beat somebody. It is because we, are, we have not done very well in terms of putting a leash on governors, side that they have a lot of money that they want to hire people who do not have any business in terms of growth of form a platform for abuse, Madam Speaker. With those very many remarks, I beg to support with amendments. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Senate, Senator Beatrice. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, from the onset, I want to support this bill and to say that uh, it, was, it, it, it is a bill that should have come like yesterday. Madam Speaker, just because uh, it, is, uh, it is spelling out uh, the role of valuation. Madam Speaker, uh, I used to work in the county uh, of Homer Bay, uh, the way Senator Shirage has uh, indicated. And precisely, I worked as a CUC lands. And Madam Speaker, I want to say valuation has been a big challenge to counties. Uh, since the onset of counties. And when, uh, while I was there, Madam Speaker, in 2013, and uh, to give a very specific example, that there was only one government value that was handling Kisi, Nyamira, Migori, and Homabi. And that was replicated in all other counties, Madam Speaker to the extent that when counties wanted to purchase anything or uh, 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 do anything that involved valuation, you had to book with that one valuer. And remember, you already had a schedule set out in all the four counties. So each county kept on waiting, and it ended up that this valuer was like a god figure. Uh, in the county because he served at a whim and he would come for very few minutes, Madam Speaker. So I'm happy, I'm happy that this now uh, is being uh, provided for in the national 
uh, rating bill that we are discussing. And Madam Speaker, I want to support also the fact that there will be a chief uh, government value. Of course, with restricted uh, mandate. Madam Speaker, because there is need to be an office that is setting standards, that is giving guidelines that will be harmonized across the counties. Madam Speaker, you know we have the 47 governments with one national government. It is important that all the counties do uh, uh, the, same, uh, the same in terms of standards, in terms of guidelines, of uh, valuation. And so uh, I support the fact that there is need to be a chief government value, but that does not mean, Madam Speaker, that the chief government value will uh, go to perform county functions. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm happy that uh, this bill also gives the counties uh, the power to employ valuers in the counties that will be dealing with valuation activities and, of course, harmonize with the chief valuer. So the initial fear I had, Madam Speaker, is that the chief government valuer was going to be like some prefect, some supervisor. But I'm happy that we should restrict the functions of this chief government valuer to guidelines, to standards, and to overseeing that these standards and policies uh, is undertaken in all uh, the counties. This, to me, is going to set order across the counties. Madam Speaker, in the counties, to be specific, initially, during the local uh, authorities, and even with the counties at the onset, you'd be surprised that in the urban centers, big establishment, big properties, having big activities, would pay less taxes than the common market woman that takes their tomato, vegetable, onion, some uh, banana in some trough. And this is how it used to be, Madam Speaker, that these market women and men would pay excess of an example 100 shillings per day. Madam Speaker, if you worked on that total, 100 shillings per day for a month meant that this poor woman selling bananas, just one trough of banana, was paying 3,000 to the county in terms of success. If you multiplied that times 12 uh, months, it meant that this says was totaling to something not less than 36,000, Madam Speaker. But here you had one property owner in a town one uh, person hand, uh, uh, um, holding land in a town paying 10,000 in a year. So it just meant that the common market women were being taxed more by the counties as opposed to the bigger establishment. And that is why I'm supporting this bill that after evaluation, the property owners and the landowners would be paying rates that are commensurate to what they have. But Madam Speaker, as this is done, as valuation is done, and as our people will be paying these taxes, why do they pay taxes? They pay taxes so that they are given uh, proper services that they need in the urban centers. So as we pay, as our people will be paying taxes, we want to see that the counties are able to give our people access in the town centers. We want to see that our urban centers have water. We want to see that there are firefighting equipments in the towns. We'd like to see that as these taxes are collected, markets are developed that are commensurate to the taxes that are being collected. We want to see that in the urban centers, solid waste management, both solid and water waste is managed. Madam Speaker, we want to see, as Senator Gloria Roba was saying, that stormwater management is put in place so that our towns do not flood. 
We want to see that there's proper planning, physical planning of our urban centers and the required facilities are in place like marketing lights. Madam Speaker, it is unfortunate that in some counties, counties collect cess and taxes from markets that have not even been compensated. That those markets are still sitting on freehold lands. That somebody owns some land, a market is growing and the counties are collecting. I have one such market in my ward called Kodumba Market. A market that is still owned by an individual, Madam Speaker. This is a poor family that has made endless trips to get compensation. Yet the government uh, of the day is collecting cess and collecting taxes from that market. So, Madam Speaker, the county governments must also compensate uh, those landowners even as they, they collect uh, uh, taxes. Madam Speaker, I also want to touch on the issue of own source revenue. Uh, sometimes I think most of the counties just bring the issue, quote figures of own source uh, revenue just to balance their budget. Because, Madam Speaker, after even the fact that they quote, you see it is so exciting that County A used to collect B, but now they collect so much. But it stops just at the figures. Are these increases reflected in the out, in outcomes for our people? Do we see such of these increases uh, getting, uh, getting invested back to our people? And that brings me to the issue of also pending bills of the counties. We would be happy as a Senate that as the on revenue is increasing, we'd also see that the counties are paying their pending bills. Madam Speaker, there is always a tired excuse that counties give, and it is very easy. I've often heard it with Nairobi County that the pending bills we have were bills that were accrued uh, from the defunct uh, authorities. Madam Speaker, to me, that is a big lie, because even then, after when the counties came in, we are seeing the pending bills increasing. We are not seeing the pending bills being paid. Madam Speaker, why I'm keen on the issue of the pending bills is that they, the pending bills should be a fast charge on budgets. But we do not see them being paid. The pending bills, we also talk about the aging system where you should be able to pay what was earlier committed in counties, but we see the pending bills are increasing. So, Madam Speaker, I support... Uh, uh, the national rating bills, and just to illustrate, when the counties came in being, and I've said it here, that I was a CEC of lands and housing, it was so pathetic, Madam Speaker, that in houses that were built by the defunct uh, local authority and were inherited by the Homer Bay County government, when I went through, we saw houses, people living in two bedroom houses, three bedroom houses, and they were paying as little as 800 shillings, Madam Speaker. When the market value of such houses in the same town was over 20,000 shillings. And Madam Speaker, this was because no valuation had been done from the 70s. And so there was no basis for even getting, increasing the collections uh, from those houses. So Madam Speaker, I support the national rating bill. I support the fact that valuation now uh, is now being standardized, is now being harmonized. There are set guidelines that are going to uh, be used by the chief government valuer to oversee how valuation uh, will, be, uh, will go about in all the counties, and we call upon the counties uh, to be as consultative as possible because that is also uh, indicated in the bill. I'm happy that this, uh, it's going to be participatory uh, a process. Madam Speaker, as the counties collect, we would like to see uh, services being given back to the people from the uh, collections that they make. Madam Speaker, I support. Uh, Senator Manzo. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to contribute on this very important bill. Unfortunately, Madam Speaker, the titling of the bill is the national rating, uh, you know, bill coming from a national assembly, and therefore has been prepared and most probably public participation done by the national assembly, and it is done mainly as if it's for national purposes. And uh, under its section 55, it seeks, you know, to repeal CAP 267 and CAP 266. CAP 267 was a local authorities, you know, act which dealt with, uh, you, know, you know, the old authorities. And the 266 had something to do with the ratings. And uh, I do agree that as the years move, and now that we're in devolution time, uh, it should, you know, we should now deal with the devolution and as a Senate. And one of the things I think should happen is this bill should be subjected again to public participation at the counties, so that the counties have their say. The National Assembly and the Senate are making a law uh, for the counties. And I believe there was no sufficient uh, public participation uh, during, uh, you know, the, 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 the National Assembly uh, proceedings. And therefore, it, uh, it should be a culture that when law is being made for the counties and comes to the Senate from the National Assembly, then we should do public participation so that we can do uh, proper amendments of this particular law and so that it begins giving, it begins giving meaning uh, to, to, you know, you know to, to, to the law itself. When you look at um, uh, the, the, where, you know, delegated legislation is going to originate, it says the cabinet secretary, the cabinet, sec uh, the cabinet secretary may make regulations generally uh, for the better uh, carrying out or effect of the provisions of this act. It doesn't say which cabinet secretary. So then, who is the decision make maker on this? Is it the land's cabinet secretary? Is it a cabinet secretary in charge of devolution? Most probably it means uh, the, 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 the land's uh, cabinet secretary, but you can see that needs to be clarified further. Now, we, uh, quite a lot of times, you have seen almost every governor uh, putting up a very big banner. I've seen that for governor of Nairobi. I've seen that for governor of Kiambu. Uh, then it runs a lot of adverts in the radio stations and TV stations. Oh, we are going to exempt, you know, you know taxes for, for leasing and all these uh, for this number of months, and then we extend from December to January, then March. I believe these counties are, are, are losing revenue. If you are, and then this advert is going to who? Is it to the government, to the national government institutions, which have failed to pay land rates, you know, for such a long time? What happens to stadiums? which occupy land in the counties uh, and they pay land rates and 